kids. It's time to get some SML podcast all up in that. What's up, everybody? This is the SML Podcast. I am your host, Joe. Joining as usual, Cole. Cole, how are you doing? I exist. Yay! Hooray! <laughs> I get to come back again for another week. <laughs> <laughs> just letting you hang on. Yeah, just by a thread, though. <laughs> Every yeah, you- time I say something funny, it, like, it secures me for another week. It does. <laughs> It's just that little bit that keeps you employed every week. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we're not alone this week. We're not. We are it's not. It's been a while, we're... too. Mick Waits of Four Horses, how are you doing today? Hi there. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing quite well, thank you. It's, a, it's well, a joyous occasion for us, pretty much. Welcome back to the show. Hey, it's good to be back. Thanks. And it's good to have you back. You are here. Uh, your new game, Miles and Kilo, just released this week. Uh, for those who don't know what the game is, give us the sales pitch. Okay, Miles and Kilo is a game very much from the past uh, in 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 terms of everything, really. It's got a retro look, a retro feel, and none of the modern horrors like DLC and season passes and all that nonsense. You just pay <laughs> once, it's yours, play it as often as you like. It's pretty challenging. It's a action platform game. You control Miles, who's got a recover the stolen bits of his plane uh with a bit of help from his dog kilo who uh who adds a bit of extra spice to the levels in which he features i think that should cover it fairly well yeah that sounds like you nailed everything so that's it for this episode thanks so much. <laughs> no worries thanks for having me <laughs> cole what Next. kind of questions do you have you you uh you weren't I, I here the last one, time were you i have one major no i don't think i was I have one major question. The mm. first boss is a black cat, and I just want to know why y'all hate black cats. <laughs> I, I I don't hate black cats. I actually have a black cat called okay. Timmy. Okay, join the club, black cat club. <laughs> so yeah, um, I, I'll throw all responsibility for the game's design over to Mike Burns, who's uh, an American individual who created pretty well. I mean, he created the game pretty much single-handedly all, all he outsourced was the uh music um very talented guy obviously did the same with kid trip the game prior to this which didn't feature any cats at all which i'm not sure if that's better <laughs> no cats or cats that are evil um but um yeah he 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 chose the uh the bosses and dogs chase cats i guess so that's probably what inspired him for the uh for the first boss because when you when you tackle him uh, kilo takes charge so yeah i i will concede that if you're gonna have a black cat that's gonna be a bad character having it steal something is basically like on brand yeah it's the most yeah. on brand for a black cat it could be <laughs> I, to be fair i'm almost i'm almost in the camp that i can i can just accept that cats are sort of evil anyway because all <laughs> they ever do is plot your demise whether it be tripping you up on the stairs or or just Killing you through lack of sleep was the meow for food at you. But um, I do love cats. The best creatures on earth. You said you have one, right? Uh, well, we, we have two, actually. Two. Um, but I have a black cat. Yeah. What are their yeah, names? Did, uh, the, the black one's Timmy. Um, he's about 15 now, and he's very much slowing down. We're getting a bit worried for him, to be honest. Wow. Um, but the, the younger one is uh, Socks, and he's just an absolute murdering monster. <laughs> <laughs> It sounds like Gabriel. <laughs> he's, we, we think he's had three of our neighbor's rabbits at some point <gasps> a few years ago. Um, well, I mean, he had he definitely had several rabbits, although it was, it, counting them was quite difficult with the pieces that they were in. Oh, God. Uh, <laughs> oh, but, my. Um, yeah. Um, we've not seen any before. We've not seen any since. It was just like in the space of one week, and we, we just sort of kept our heads down a bit in the neighborhood <laughs> just in case. But he... <laughs> you know, he it was. It was. He brought home a seagull at one point. We live quite close to the coast, so <laughs> they're pretty big. And he was still a kitten at the time. That's um, amazing. 
Yeah, I brought like, you a he, present. <laughs> he he just murders stuff so much, and for fun as well. He's not presents anymore because um, when we if if we hear him fighting with something when he's brought it in the house, if we go near him, he just growls and then runs off back outside. Because that that's been our usual ploy. We just so we don't have anything to clean up in the house, we'll just try and chase him <laughs> outside and go, oh, whatever. If you've still got it, we're not going to try and get it off you now. <laughs> but um, yeah, so so many things. <laughs> See, now, That's amazing. Gabriel is a murder machine, and he's absolutely savage. And he just does that shit for shits and giggles. Yeah. And but now we have a pet rabbit, and he's never offered to bother her at all. It's a funny thing. But right. admittedly, Ember's a little on the the chubby side, and so maybe he thinks there wouldn't be any sport in her because she'd just be like, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> She she could also just belly flop him and he'd be done for. So. Oh god! <laughs> so that's also a possibility. Uh, but yeah, he mice are his thing and birds. We had a bird get in. Um, my husband had left the window cracked, and a bird got in. And I did like I spent like twenty minutes trying to keep Gabe away from not notice that bird. Right as I had it by the front door, and it went to fly out. He just jumps up out of nowhere and snags it and kills it. I was like, God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> it's so been close. 25 minutes trying to save that bird's life. And then here comes Gabe out of nowhere. And he's like, nope, bird mine. And then I had to go and pick up feathers all over the place. And he does the growling <laughs> thing, too. When he has things, that's immediately how you know. Like, you yeah. just you, you be sitting here in the, in the living room. And he'll be somewhere else in the house. And then you just hear like this loud thump because Gabe's Gabe's also a hefty boy. And uh, and you'll like hear a loud thump. And then you'll just start here growling. And at that point, I just look at my husband and I go, that's your cat. Because he has to go take it away from him. Otherwise, we find it all over the house. Oh, my Lord. Yeah, it's, it's pretty similar to us. We we were walking by socks in the middle of the night at one point, scratching about in our room, and we, we wondered what was going on. We were going, oh, please don't. Don't let him have brought something in. And we'd totally forgotten about it when we woke up in the morning. Uh, and then about three weeks later, it's like, it sort of seems to be starting to smell in this room. Do you think we should open the window? And we checked under the bed and found a dead mouse rotting oh, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. It obviously got away from him and then just hid there and not made it. Yeah. See, at least your cats are doing their job. I have eight cats and none of them can catch a mouse to save their life. <laughs> but do you have any there for them to catch? Yes, we have okay. mice. <laughs> we have to have traps underneath the sink to catch them because our cats are useless. How about yeah, I'm talking about you. I'm talking about you. <laughs> I'll get me a FedEx box and send your socks over for a week. He'll sort them out. That's what I say all the time. Like my, my in-laws live across the street from us and they're always having trouble with mice. We live in the middle of nowhere, so mice are just, they're part of life. Yeah. And every time you turn around, they're like, oh, I, I got mice in my kitchen again. I'm like, look, let me bring Gabe over for an hour. Problem solved. You won't <laughs> see another mouse <laughs> for a long time. And when you do, just come get Gabe again and you're done. <laughs> just borrow the cat. Stop spending a fortune on mouse traps and just come borrow Gabe. <laughs> I think he we is, spent maybe was, 10 bucks, so it's not a fortune on mousetraps. <laughs> no, they went and like bought all these special big traps with glue inside and all kinds of weird shit. They, they've spent a fortune. They've had mice problems ever since they moved into that house. Of course, I mean, we have them too, but cats. So <laughs> they're not, they're See, not the kind of issue for us that it is for them. I don't like glue traps. I think that's mm -hmm. inhumane. I would rather just, you know, break their neck right away, have it quick, painless. Yeah. The glue traps, I'm not a fan of. I'm not down with that. I would like to pretend that letting the cats get them is more humane. It's not. <laughs> Depends seen, on the cat. <laughs> look, <laughs> Raven, Raven goes outside from time to time. Gabe only stays in the house, but Raven will go outside. And the other morning I went out. And Ravenhead went out when, when the girls went to school. And so I go out later to feed my chickens. And Raven is just strutting around, pleased as punch, with a mouse in his mouth. And he, he just looks the happiest I've seen that cat since we adopted him. <laughs>
And I'm like, dude, what are you doing? And he just lays it down at the top of the hill where our driveway has like a really steep slope. He lays that mouse down and then it starts to run. He hits it and it just goes rolling down the hill <laughs> all the way to the road. And he's just sitting there watching it. And I'm like, you sadistic little fucker. <laughs> horrible so it's not at all more humane to let the cats get them <laughs> no oh, lord no. <laughs> at least oh, not man. my cat anyway miles and kilo <laughs> what, what other <laughs> animals are in miles and kilo <laughs> oh the, the, there's a good list of them there's monkeys that are pretty evil oh, um, those. Uh... <laughs> those are my nemesis yeah like, i can take out any other of the like the bats and and all the other shit, that's fine. You put that monkey, it's gonna, I don't know if it's a coconut it throws at you. Yep. And it could just fuck itself right off. That's all I've got to say about the monkey. <laughs> I, I'm not sure if they're, even, if they're more annoying or less annoying in the original kid trip, because in the original, you didn't, the monkeys were always in trees, they always threw the coconuts. Whereas in, in kid trip, you get the ones on the ground that'll deflect your fruit that you throw at them and can only be, uh, can only be got by stomping. So, um, there's, there's, there's those in this one too. <laughs> no, no, I'm saying that those aren't in, in the original in Kid Trip. There's just oh. the ones in the trees throwing okay. the coconuts. Yeah, in, in some... Mouth and Kilo, there's the ones that will, you can't kill them with the fruit. Yeah. You have to jump on them, and then I'm just like, I hate you twice as much. <laughs> but, but the Kid Trip ones sort of seem a bit more evil, and they got they got quite a lot of uh, attention when the game first launched, with a lot of people being slightly annoyed by them, which uh, which is good. That's what you I... want. <laughs> Do yeah, you want people to like rage? Is that is that half of the battle? Like when you're making a platformer like this, you're like, if they're if they're not aggravated, we didn't do it right. Um, it's not that that's a an out and out goal, but um, making a challenging game is is definitely what we were aiming for. Um, it, it's the sort of games we like to play ourselves, really. So it, it's always good if you can make a game for yourself, but then. Then, if it appeals to other people, get it out to them. That's 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 our aim, really. Yeah, win win. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> I just want to know what I got to do to get a crybaby mode. <laughs> uh, it, it's do you know it's it's sort of being considered. Um, I'm really really reluctant to do it though. I've, I've, there's arguments on on both sides. Um, what are the arguments? Well. Uh, there's, I don't know if you've heard of the, there's an Irish comedian called Dara O'Brien. He's, he's quite a big gamer. And one of his stand up routines he did, he was talking about the fact that, so, that he's basically, he loves games, but he's not very good at them. So he thinks he should get a discount for, uh, for all the games he buys because he never experiences more than 25% of them. <laughs> and his argument is that your ability shouldn't be a barrier to reaching all the content in the game. Um, <laughs> And I sort of I I understand that sentiment. I I can see that point. Um, but on the other hand, when you create a game, or particularly when someone else creates the game, because obviously these these aren't my original creations, I uh, I don't want to go messing with their vision. I don't want to go saying that they made a mistake or they did something wrong and it should be this way. So yeah, I mean, I, I showed the game off at um, EGX a little. A uh, little show, sort of similar to PAX, but probably a bit smaller that we have in the UK. And it was interesting watching people play. The, I mean, I learned quite a lot of things. First of all, that people, even if you put tutorial hints up on screen, people don't read them. Nope. Uh, <laughs> Just mash the A button. Yeah. Yeah, and then and then die five times over in the same place when they could have just stopped for a second and read. But anyway, um, so... So yeah, the it just got so tempting there. So it's like maybe I should put checkpoints in, even if they're optional. But then that that breaks things like leaderboards. What do you do for the leaderboards then? Do you then exclude people from them because they use the assistance modes? Um, so it, it's a tough one. And again, as with anything, well, the, another another compelling reason for me not to do it is I just simply don't have the time. Um, <laughs> If, if I could dedicate full-time work to getting Miles and Kilo and Kid Trip on all the platforms that I've promised Mike that I will do, then 
then I, I could maybe get it done in, in like three or four months. But as it is, I've got a full-time day job and I'm just doing this in my spare time. So it's any extra work as well as the time it takes sort of implementing it, there's then the danger that it introduces a bug that I don't spot. So I book a QA slot with Sony, get the game sent off, they spot the bug, fail it, and then push back a few months sort of as, as you repeat the whole process. So it, it's just risk. And yeah, it's these things you've got to weigh up. And uh, unfortunately, it's, it's, it's tough. <laughs> it's a tough decision. But so there you go, Cole. You do the damn work. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can I can appreciate that it's definitely not an easy thing to have to implement. But I, I it's one of those damned if you do, damned if you don't. Like there's always going to be people like me who need to play easier difficulties because of disability or whatever. And then there's always going to be people who beat that shit super quick and they're like that's it that's all i got what that was worth my money yeah that, i mean that was one of the weird things with kid trip when i when i first played it i think i was about five six hundred lives before i beat it um it definitely took a took a while it was the, the final level i think took me over an hour just on its own and then when the game launched on switch one of the reviewers um in in in, his, in the review that he posted, said that the game was really short. He beat it in forty five minutes, and it's like that's no. <laughs> wow. He no. must have played the iOS version. And I contacted him, and I'm I'm not one for contacting reviewers and querying what they say too much. And I'm saying, look, this isn't a criticism. I'm not I'm not asking you to fiddle with your review or anything, but just curious, had you played that? Had you played the game on any of the other platforms before? And he said, no, it was his first encounter with it, and I was absolutely shocked. Um, so yeah, it, it does happen. You get people who just, it, it fits right with them and it's, it's not as challenging as, as it is for other people. So yeah. Well, fuck those people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that them and their skill. <laughs> I like to yeah. think that I'm even pretty good at, at, um, platformers like this, despite, you know, the whole crooked finger and everything. But I, I don't know how people run through them so quickly it just absolutely blows my mind yeah i think i think if it just fits with you i mean for me again with miles and kilo it took me quite a few attempts before i first beat it and the the final boss battle um just oh so many lives lost on that but then but then now when i play it i I, I just get in the flow and i can go through it all right when i first played the xbox version after I got the download code, so sort of the real live version, uh, I managed to finish the time attack mode in nine lives, which I was really pleased with because it's put me quite high up on the leaderboard. Um, it's not cheating, is it, if a developer gets on the leaderboard? <laughs> um, so, so yeah, it, it, I think it's one of those things. It's just it, it can fit in with you. It can fit in with anyone once you've played enough, and just it really just feels right, and you you just get the feel of what you're doing and just hit the buttons at the right time and get into a real flow with it. Um, but yeah, you can, I mean, there's times though that I can play and I get to that last boss and I, I, it just falls apart and I'll, I'll lose 30 lives in one go on him. So yeah. Did you, one of the things you mentioned in your review call was the, uh, the buttons weren't laid out quite how you'd like them, but did you find the reconfigure option? I did because I'm a dumb. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I will take my time and comb through every single option. Sometimes I'll just glance and be like, okay, that's what's there and carry on. Yeah. And this was one of those instances where it looked pretty like on the surface. And I was like, okay, that's it. And I didn't notice that the controls, I just assumed if I scrolled down, it would show an image of the controls rather right. than actually clicking on it. And oh, there, okay. Rather, I didn't realize that it was just something that I could edit. Because I'm dumb. <laughs> but I did find it. And I was actually playing it again before we started the, the interview because I wanted to see if I could do better. And I did. Once I changed the buttons, I was like, oh, yeah. this works. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was very important to get the uh, controls configuration in there because uh, both myself and Mike disagree about how the buttons should be. So I think I got my way in Kid Trip and he got his way. In Miles and Kilo <laughs> for What's the, the console versions. Um, if I remember rightly, I think I prefer jump on the 
what I refer to in my code as the East button. Uh, it would be Circle on on PlayStation, or I think is it? Oh, I've got an Xbox controller in front of me now. B, yeah. yeah, and then Throw Stone on A. Although I, I tend to use the left trigger for Throw Stone, so I can keep the two actions uh, on different hands. I just find it a bit easier in some of the more frantic moments. What was works. hanging me up was I was trying to use Y as the action and A as the jump. And yes. A for me is like a natural interactive button. X tends to be like interact with the world. A is jump and move. Yeah. And so that's what I was trying to do. And I was like, even though on the screen, the tutorial was like jump with B. And then I pressed A on accident. I was like, oh, I'm good. Never mind. Fuck B. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we got A. And then I got to the point where you would be controlling Kilo and you would, you know, um, target for the homing with Y and then try to, to extend your jump with A. And I'm like, look, yeah, I, got, I got arthritis, people. This isn't cutting it. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's understandable. That's that was awesome. definitely my own fuck up, though, <laughs> because I just didn't realize I could change the controls. So how you. far did you get through the game? I can't remember what you said last last time when you reviewed it. I didn't beat it, but I'm on the last set of levels. Yeah, I like those. <laughs> so, I'm I'm cutting through it slowly but surely. And I usually have very limited time to go back to review games after I've beat them. But I've gone back to Miles and Kilo a few different times just to work on it and keep chipping away at it. I'm oh. going to beat it. It might be next week, but I'm going to beat it. We yeah, I like that determination. When I was when I was at that EGX show, we had a young lad there. I think he was about ten or eleven, and uh, for the demo in, at EGX, we had all the levels unlocked. So he he spent quite a good while just making sure he beat every single boss, um, and then he he was playing the final level when basically they were kicking people out because after after the final boss is actually an extra level. Yeah. Um, and he came back the, the very next morning. He was pretty much first through the door, ran straight to uh, our booth, got himself <laughs> sat down. And I think he spent about 20, 25 minutes just finishing that last level. And it was fantastic watching him do it. It was really, really good, really satisfying. But yeah, he, he got that determination. He just he wanted to do it. And there was a few others that were quite funny as well. I don't know if you've looked at the achievement list. There's one of them is to complete level one six i think it is yeah uh, without using the surfboard which um it, it's quite challenging and we had two different people at the show determined that they were going to do that one so that was good i i want to go back and try it and it wasn't until i got to one of the later levels where you have to jump on the water more yeah that i really practiced it and i'm like oh i can go back and get that now um that's the funny thing about miles and kilo is i feel like i've gotten better at it not just the more I played, but the later levels taught me stuff that I could go back and do in the earlier levels to get better scores. Yeah, yeah, that's that's level that pretty much you have to jump on the surface of the water just to get across anyway, sort of designed with that in mind to uh, to give you that hint. It's tough. It is tough. And what's funny is like I was playing and my, my youngest daughter, she's, she's six and she's like standing beside me her little perky curly red hair and her arms crossed and she's watching me and she's like she says this looks like mario yeah yeah it kind of <laughs> does i'm good at mario yeah i know you are <laughs> she said i'm gonna play this i was like well have your sister download it on y'all's xbox i don't care and she goes i'm not gonna die like you are though and then just <laughs> walked away <laughs> <laughs> it it does look deceptively simple. I think it's the I think it's the cutesy graphics. People see it and right. they assume that that it's not going to it's not going to hurt them. But no, no, it can it can hurt you plenty. <laughs> it was it was funny because the first couple of levels, I'm like, yeah, I got this. I know what I'm doing. I'm not bad. Yeah. No, by the end, I'm just like I died. It pops up and it's like 25 times that I died just to get through one level. And I'm like, okay, well, I hate myself now. Next. <laughs> <laughs> yes yeah <laughs> persistence pays off there's that one achievement that's like die 15 times and then beat the level and that that might have been on my lower end of deaths for some yep. levels i've definitely hit 30 and 40 deaths easily that's a little excessive and i'm outing myself for how bad i am 
It's okay. No, I, 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 <laughs> I think that's fairly common from what I've seen. <laughs> like, I just sat there. It's always those fucking monkeys throwing the, the coconuts at me, though. And then they grin. Yeah, and then I'm just like... Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and it starts back over so fast that you're like, well, I'm here. I might as well do it one more time. Well, yeah, that's something else modern games have that we didn't want you to have any sign of with the loading screen. Straight back in the action before you can t- change your mind and switch it off. <laughs> this, yeah, there's a lot of times where I was just like, I, this is it. This is the last one. And then I die doing something stupid really early when I know I could make it to the end of the level. I can't tell you how many times that I'd get to the end of the level. I could literally see the, the, the end point and I'd be steps from it and I'd do something stupid and die. Yeah. And then you're just like, no, I'm going to do it again. And then you, like, you're so worked up, you die immediately early in the next run. And then you're just like, I can't go out like that. I have to do it again. And then before you know it, you died 74 more times, but you're going to get it on number 75. <laughs> next thing you know, three hours has passed. The kids are hungry. It, yeah. Mommy, why haven't you fed us yet? <laughs> Shit. You exist, Hush. don't you? God damn it. <laughs> Oh, gosh. That's not something you hear often about your own kids. You exist. God damn it. <laughs> I do like my kids. <laughs> I know that sometimes it sounds a little questionable, but. You tolerate them, I guess. I mean, they're here. They're all right. <laughs> I'm a parent. I understand that. <laughs> there's, there's days where you're like, eh, I don't know. Talk to me tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I unfortunately don't have kids, so I don't know the feeling. I just have cats. You just have cats. Which, way, you know... Way too many cats. Eight cats is basically the equivalent of three kids. <laughs> <laughs> it's about on par. They have about the same need spectrum. And the same level of assholery. So, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to guess the assholery is a little bit more with eight cats. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I have all daughters, so it's. <laughs> I'd swap eight cats for a twelve-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You can borrow my teenager and see how she compares to eight cats. No, I'm good. I put up with my niece enough that um, <laughs> I'm I'm happy with my cats. My decision has been made, and I am happy with it. <laughs> 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 oh man so you mentioned uh miles and kilo is a sequel to kid trip what are the differences between the two games well the the uh, from a point of view of miles and kilo i've been more familiar with that kid trip uh has considerably lower resolution graphics the the pixels are much much chunkier um the levels are a little bit shorter and one of the big differences is uh my, with Kid Trip, auto run is not optional. Uh, you are auto running. Um, the game's origins were on mobile, and I think when Mike first created it, I'm not sure he ever really expected to get a console version out of it. But um, as soon as I saw it, I just fell in love straight away and wanted to bring it to 3DS because it's it's a really nice resolution for the Nintendo 3DS screen, and then the stereoscopic layering makes it look really nice as well. Um, obviously his sprites have quite a lot of a uh, part in that. Um, so Kid Trip doesn't have boss battles and it's, it's a little bit shorter as, uh, only 20 levels, but to make up for that, it costs half as much. Which makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. We, we felt so. It's, um, it, it's a nice little game. It's, uh, it's equally challenging. The monkeys are pretty much equally evil. Um, <laughs> but, um, but it's a little bit more bite-sized than uh, than Miles and Kilo, and I am planning to bring that to Xbox and Windows 10 later. Um, I'm currently working on it for Vita and PS4 at the minute. So once I've done those, I'm sort of going to see which platform performs better, and then I'll either do Miles and Kilo on Sony systems or I'll do Kid Trip on Nintendo, no, not Nintendo, Microsoft. I think <laughs> Nintendo and Microsoft are about the same now, aren't they? It they're seems gonna, it. They're going to be the same company soon. <laughs> it might be. That we. I'm sure we're going to talk about all that news later on in the show, but uh, what do you think of Cuphead showing up on, on the Switch? 
Uh, I'm I'm sort of quite pleased. Um, I've, I liked the look of it when I first saw it, although I'm not sure I'd enjoy it as much as I'd hoped the graphics would tell me I'd enjoy it. But we'll see. I'll probably go for it. I might go for a physical version as long as it's not ridiculously expensive. Um, but yeah, I think it's good news. I, I can't remember what made me think I'd seen it very much leaked or hinted at, unless that was just someone's mock-up that I remember seeing on Twitter a while ago. But um, I, I always figured that it should be able to come to the Switch. It doesn't look like it's doing anything too graphically intensive, so it's it's good to see it on there. Uh, more more excited for me is is the or more exciting for me are the uh, is the news that it's going to bring the xbox live and the achievements of with it as well and they've said that that might happen with future games as well so i given that i've now got miles and kilo on switch and on xbox and it supports leaderboards and achievements on xbox uh, it'd be quite nice if i could retrofit the the same things into uh, into the switch version because, um, well, Nintendo doesn't have an achievement system, and they do have leaderboards, but um, I haven't put those in it as yet. If that got adopted to where people were adding achievements to Switch games, I would have to get a Switch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, are you, are you an achievement hound? As much as I can be within reason. <laughs> yeah, I have 200 245,000 gamer score. Very nice. Yeah. So now if I could actually go back and play like all the games that I've reviewed for achievements, then I would <laughs> I'd be giving Stallion a run for his money. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> uh, I have a lot of games on my <laughs> I have some I won a while back from Free Code Friday from Larry Herb and I didn't I didn't even get to play them yet. Jeez. And that was like Two years ago that I won them. Well, you're welcome. Yeah. Don't keep me busy. <laughs> I keep you off the corners. <laughs> <laughs> it's also true. <laughs> it's a service to my husband, and he doesn't even know it. <laughs> so, uh, do, you, do you think that you're going to have the ability to eventually add achievements to Kid Trip and Miles and Kilo on the Switch? I... I Based on on the fact that I know absolutely nothing, I, as a as a developer the size I am and with the relationship I have with Nintendo, I, I don't get any inside info or any forewarning of anything that's coming whatsoever. So I I simply don't know. But if if they get supported by the system in one sh- in in any shape or form, whether it's Nintendo's own system, which has been rumored, or whether it's going to be the uh, Xbox achievements, which has also been rumored, then yeah, I w- I'd ret- ret- retrofit them in because of the games already technically support them anyway. Because with the with uh, Miles and Killer, we've I mean we've even just called them achievements in in that game. They're just listed in the uh, menu. You can sort of see what you've got, what you haven't, and it does its own pop up notification toasts when they're awarded. Uh, and Kid Trip's exactly the same, except we we refer to them as challenges in there because when I was doing that, I wasn't entirely sure how uh, how much you can get away with calling them achievements. But it seems no one's too worried. <laughs> yeah, it seems like that's just the the common name for them anymore. No Even matter Steam what the platform just calls is. Them achievements. Yeah, yeah. We well, yeah. We we've called them challenges in Kid Trip, but they've got a little trophy icon when they're awarded as well. So we're covering both bases. Um, <laughs> But Trophy hunting sounds more nefarious than achievement hunting. Sort of does, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Yeah, right. I've I've heard there are people who'll buy PlayStation games just because they hear they've got an easy platinum trophy in them, and I'm kicking myself because uh, I, I want to put a platinum in both these games, but they're not going to be easy. Um, and I'd, <laughs> I, yeah, we do it on Xbox too. You tell us it's an easy 1K and it's sold. <laughs> I, I've been so, so tempted to um, to keep the challenges in Kid Trip as they are, as challenges, and award the uh, trophies or achievements separately for, for less arduous tasks. I like, am... I am you jump really for the just, first time. <laughs> yeah. I'm really just waiting for the one developer that says, 1G for pressing the start button and 999G for watching a cutscene 
and you're done. And that will be the <laughs> richest motherfucker to ever see the light of day because everybody's <laughs> going to buy it. Look at Avatar. Avatar The Last Airbender is what? A five minute completion? Oh, yeah. Exactly. And it's one of the most coveted games. Like, it's expensive to actually buy it. You can only oh, get it if- on eBay and shit, and it's expensive. <laughs> Because <laughs> people want it just for the cheap yeah. game score. That's brilliant. There's, um, oh, where was I going to go with that? No, I've lost my train of thought. Sorry. It happens. I'm used like to it with her. You're not allowed. Yeah, I do it all the time. Who am I again? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you can't even say, oh, I'm an achievement hunter if you don't have Avatar the Last Airbender on your yeah, card. Yeah, it seems like a rite of passage to have yeah. Avatar on your gamer card. That's why you're like, are you, oh, are you an achievement hunter? And I'm like, well, I don't have Avatar. <laughs> it's funny. But Avatar was I, on sale, I think, during the Christmas sale for like five bucks, too. Yeah. Wow. I think about There's a lot of developers whose games we've had to review, and they their big selling point is it's five dollars and it's a quick one K. There is. <laughs> Sometimes There's... that's just the best you can do. <laughs> well, well, kid trip can be completed in in under ten minutes. Uh, unfortunately, Eight. it'll take you a lot more than that <laughs> uh, getting to be that good. <laughs> there, there's your one G. Make the rest of the game nine hundred ninety nine G, and then like make that one one G. You'll also successfully piss off the achievement hunters who only want zeros or fives at the end oh, of their number. Oh God, so. I. I love when games put achievement values that are like earn 43 points for this, earn 27 <laughs> for doing this. Those are my favorite games because it pisses so many people off. <laughs> have like you thought about doing that with your right achievements? I, I haven't, although I, I wasn't aware it would uh, piss anyone off, but I'm, I'm very much in the financial position where I want everyone to love my game. So I'd, <laughs> I'd, I'd, <laughs> if I was rich, maybe I could afford to piss people off. <laughs> <laughs> See, now you're, you're going to go back to your business partner and be like, so how can we make, how fast can we make a game that we can sell for $5? It's an easy 1000 <laughs> Going to roll in it, I promise you. <laughs> See, if you had five super easy achievements that were e- each worth one point, that would sell a lot of people as well, just because they're like, how do I fix my gamer score to get back to a five or a zero? Mm-hmm. Oh, well, let me tell you about this game that you can earn five gamer score across five achievements to get it back to whatever you need. So, if I, yeah, if I make a game that's, that's got, got all the uh, complementary achievement values and people can earn them easily, it'll help them round their achievement score back out whenever they get a, a dick game that gives them the, uh, yeah, the score exactly. they don't want. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. See, I like that. These are the little niches that developers don't <laughs> think about. But you'd be surprised. Like there are whole communities of people that are obsessed with these kind of numbers and and the the achievement hunting side of playing games and how much you know how much gamer score can I get and how quick can I get it? It's one thing I've noticed. I can go back and add more achievements to. Mm-hmm. Uh, Miles and Kilo in theory. I'm not sure what the what the requirements are to do that, whether I've got to have any new content to go with it. Um, it's, that's getting quite tempting now. Just see how much I can fill it up. <laughs> there you go. There Ooh, used the game to be up on a Tuesday. It used to be that the arcade games on the 360 could only have 200G, and I think it was 400 tops after DLC, and now they just let every game have 1,000 I don't even know that a thousand is the limit. Like there's some games that come out with when did Guacamelee come out with like thirteen fifty or something like that I think, because I it think was that gonna was because have of DLC. DLC. Yeah. Yeah, but the DLC didn't come out at launch like it you had to wait for it. But the game launched with all the achievements and like thirteen something like that gamer score. I'm just yeah. booting up the dev site now, see if I can add some straight away. <laughs> <laughs> Sitting over there rubbing his hands. I got this. <laughs> this is the unknown marketing strategy, but it totally fucking works. <laughs> I like I like how we're recording this technically before the game releases, so you're looking to add achievements before the game even comes out. Yeah, I, I need to hurry up. It's got five and a half hours. <laughs> <laughs> is it exciting being so close to the release of the game? It is, yeah. It, it's a little weird, though, because there's been quite a few times where I've just sort of forgotten about it because I've moved on and I'm doing Kid Trip on Vita. Um, 
So it's, I, I, I sort of have to remind myself and, and sort of put out a few tweets every now and then mentioning, oh, by the way, it is coming out. Um, it, it, yeah, it's weird juggling that headspace, but um, it is exciting. It really is. I've, I've got a good feeling about this one. Uh, one thing that's slightly concerning is um, the leaderboard, from all the review copies that I've sent out, the leaderboards are getting quite full already. Um, and... Uh, I think we've got more entries on the leaderboard than there are on the Steam version, oh, wow. which is in some ways nice and in other ways bad. I feel bad for Mike for that because I, I would imagine he had big hopes for the Steam version, but from what I understand, Steam's just a, a horrible battle zone, really. It's not a good place for developers. Well, there's Time just such a glut of games. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm I'm finding that, that Switch actually is not a great place. Um, there's, no? there's just so, so much content on there now. Kid Trip did pretty well. Um, we, I think myself and Mike are both pretty happy with how that performed, but Miles and Kilo unfortunately didn't, and it's, it's through no fault of the game. It's, it's a great game. It's good quality. I just think people have got enough stuff to buy on there now, uh, or far more than enough, and it seems the only way now to... Uh, to get people to put their hands in the pockets is to put things on sale, which is something I don't really like doing for a digital game. I don't see why some people should get to pay it for less than the others. When we, it, it makes sense with physical goods. You've you've invested in stock. You need to sell off the last few remaining copies. That makes sense. But for digital, I don't think it does. I personally think the digital marketplaces shouldn't run sales um, full stop, but they do, unfortunately. And the only thing you can do really is just play the game and it's uh it's a shame well hopefully it does well on xbox i know uh on xbox there's kind of a we're going through a game drought right now where there's not too Mm -hmm. much coming out so hopefully it'll stand out more and get some attention i hope so i'm sort of hoping that the fact that it's cross play on on windows as well will be appealing to some people and one thing i've appreciated is i can just boot it up on my uh laptop and just see how many more entries there are on the leaderboard and whether i've been knocked off the top spot for one of them yet Uh, (laughs) are you on the top spot for all of them no no not all of them there's there's one for numbers of completions and i've only completed it twice since it launched i've I've, the original story playthrough and then the uh time attack um there's one for fastest completion and i'm i'm nowhere near that Uh, there's another one for fewest lives lost on time attack and someone's got through it on a single life my my records nine um but i'm on the top for score so i think it's because i know the levels really well so i've I've not i think i I got an s rank on about all but three levels so that's that's gonna help so i might stay on that for a while (laughs) is there a leaderboard for most deaths i didn't um no, there isn't. Uh, it there should be, because I'd be at the top of that one. <laughs> Do you know, actually, I think, if I remember rightly, I'm going to boot up, boot up my Xbox app. I think that is a statistic, but it's not one of the leaderboards we're showing game. So I think it'll compare you to your friends. I'm not sure if you can see how many... Uh, I, I, don't, I don't know if you can sort of compare your deaths to other people that you don't know, but you can certainly, certainly compare them with friends. Let's have a look. So that's achievements. Oh, I don't know what I'm doing with this. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, uh, now hey, you were worried about needing to add new content, and you'd be like, look, I added a new leaderboard. Yeah, total for deaths. deaths. Total deaths, 27. Uh-huh. For me. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> well, if, it, if it's any compensation, it means I haven't got the uh, the persistence pays off achievement. <laughs> <laughs> You got to work on that. You got to you got to do better one, at so achievement or Oh, I'll be getting that one very soon cuz when I go for that amphibious achievement, I'm pretty certain I'll uh, I'll get it then. <laughs> oh, man. So, what are some of your favorite achievements in the game? Um Hey, it's it's the ones like that. It's it's things like complete a level without knocking out any baddies, uh, complete a level without throwing fruit, which um just mix up the gameplay a little, make you play it in a way that you wouldn't want to, the, the complete the, that level without surfing. Uh, those really, they're, they're my, my sort of favorite sort of things. Just the, the miscellaneous ones? Yeah, and, and then the ultra-challenging ones that complete the time attack with fewer than 10 deaths. 
that's just cruel. That's evil. <laughs> yeah. it, it is, uh, particularly when I did it with 10 deaths once um, during testing, and, and I was quite cross. <laughs> <laughs> I did the pacifist I, run on accident. I was like, whoops. And then it popped the achievement. I was like, yeah. <laughs> I, I, that that one of one of the runs for fewer than ten deaths when I attempted it, I got to the last boss I think with nine deaths, and it's like, well, if I can just beat him on one go, and then lost about twenty, uh. <laughs> twenty lives <laughs> one time. Yeah, it's it's a bit easier for me to test the achievements on Kid Trip because I have uh, I have a system where I essentially make the game play itself. Um, I've got some button inputs recorded and it just plays them back and it'll uh, complete the game for me. Oh, so you cheater. Can... <laughs> I, uh, Where do I, I get that program? Optimized testing. <laughs> That's what I call it. <laughs> I never implemented it for Miles and Kilo. I did consider it. Um, like I say, for, for testing the achievements, it's brilliant because uh, yeah, it, it always does worry me that something somewhere has gone wrong and the game might not be finishable. But um, Trust me, the gamer score horse would let you know <laughs> yeah, within a day, you'll find out if there's mm-hmm. any achievements that are broken. Well, one of the streamers that I um, one of the streamers that I sent out with code to is I think it's very much a game of score whore. and then he let me know quite quickly that he'd finished all the game and all the achievements, and yeah, that is impressive. Yeah, that's that's nuts. I can take a stab at who it was, but I I wouldn't I wouldn't be surprised to find out who it was. <laughs> It's not but, Carnage either, because Carnage doesn't actually complete anything. He gets one achievement and he's done. Yeah. <laughs> Good old well, Carnage. I'm, I'm new to the whole Xbox community, so I, I know none of these names. We're a special breed. <laughs> I don't think that's a positive necessarily <laughs> either. We are a special breed, though. <laughs> Oh, Lord. Well, I know we've been chatting for quite a while now. Is there anything that you wanted to talk about the game that we didn't bring up? I don't think so. Nothing sticks to mind, really. Nothing? Cole, did you have any other questions? Where did the character names come from? I believe they So, I, I mean, Mike originally called, called the character Miles in Kid Trip, although it was never referred to in-game, but he'd always had the name Miles in his head, I, I think based on the fact that he runs and runs, so, so distance, and then Kilo is essentially just short for kilometers, so it's miles and kilometers. Oh, okay, nice. See, you're learning uh, things. I did. Uh, I didn't think of kilometers because it's. I had a friend who had a dog that he called Kilo, but it was kilogram. Oh, right. Because it but, was it was like a pug and it was tiny, and so they called him Kilo because he was tiny. When you see the in-game stats, I, I don't know if they are in-game unless you're on the PC. Um, yeah, it does. It does show you distance round, and it shows it both miles mm-hmm. and kilometers. Ah, oh, now that makes more sense. See, yeah. that was that was a good question because it got a legit answer, and unlike my black cat question, <laughs> <laughs> sometimes I can be a decent interviewer. Occasionally, <laughs> it's tough, but I do it every now and then. Hey, half the episode you just tell stories, and that's good enough. We all have our skill sets in life. <laughs> <laughs> Random tangents and funny words are mine. Uh, yes, they are. But uh, Mick, thank you so much for joining the show. I don't want to take up all of your night. Uh, good luck on the launch of the game. Tell us, where can we get it? How much is it? Well, it can be found on the Microsoft Store, and it will be around seven ninety nine dollars So whatever that translates to in whatever currency you prefer um and yeah it, it should be from essentially midnight uh, uk time friday the 22nd which is tomorrow as the time of recording so basically when you hear this it should be out now and if for whatever reason you've not got an xbox it's also available on switch and windows 10 yeah and windows 10 uh it's, well, it's the same version it's cross yeah the save. xbox version is play anywhere right yeah that's the one Yes, Got Xbox it. Play Anywhere. It's nice to see more people making use of the Play Anywhere program. Uh, yeah. Um, to be fair, I didn't have any choice, but I was I was glad that I didn't have any choice because I wanted to do it anyway. Um, but 
Microsoft have their requirements, and uh, if the game's out elsewhere, they want you to make put it on Windows as well, which I was absolutely fine with that. It wasn't any extra work from my point of view, so that actually works. it was. <laughs> it was. I had to deal with all the, the fact that you can resize the window, which is really, really annoying. Normally, games don't let you do that, but uh, unfortunately, I can't prevent it. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> How do you deal with that? Um, with a really, really horrible algorithm that I had to write about four or five times that basically, because it's designed to work on a dynamic screen resolution anyway. So, um, we, we've got an internal sort of minimum and minimum and maximum number of tiles that we draw vertically. Um, and you've, we just sort of basically say, right, if it's one, if it's one, um, 100% scale, uh, how much of the window does it take up? And if there's borders around it, it then tries 200, 300, 400 until it finds a resolution that it's happy with, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, there were, there were some problems getting that actually working because uh, uh, I don't know why. <laughs> I just, I didn't do it very well first time, I guess. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's, I was hoping we could always have a situation where you only ever get borders on either the sides or the top, depending on whether your window's too tall or too wide. But I think there's just a few rare instances, and this is where it didn't work, where um, where there needs to be borders at, at the top and the sides. So, mm. And I've that got it all sense. to do it again with Kid Trip. <laughs> <laughs> well, we are looking forward to Kid Trip hitting Xbox. Hopefully that happens mm-hmm. soon. Uh, thank you again for coming on and joining us on the show. Always a pleasure having you on. Everybody else, stick around. We're going to take a quick break. We're going to be back with more show. Mick, do you have any final words to end this? No, just thanks for having me on and uh, take care. back everyone thanks for sticking around thanks again to mick for hanging out with us that was a fun chat wasn't it yes it was i enjoyed that it's good stuff he's a good dude it's good to have interviews and stuff so we're not just talking to each other all the time i know we need to get more interviews it's been a slow year for it interviews has. well it's a slow time of the year so it's also true hopefully we could get something else set up soon i miss talking with other people no i don't I have anxiety <laughs> <laughs> So do I, but it's still fun talking with other people. (laughs) It's boring talking to you after so long. (laughs) I I don't know how I managed to be a very unboring person, despite the fact that I never leave my fucking house. You do. You do a good job at keeping (laughs) things entertaining on the show. You're more fun than CJ was. Fuck yeah. That's that's my goal in life. That's all I wanted. (laughs) I can be like the worst co-host compared to everybody else, just as long as I was better than CJ. That's all you care about, beating yep. CJ. Fuck CJ. <laughs> what, about, what about Chris? I feel like Chris would be hard to beat. He is tough to beat. Yeah, he's an okay guy. 
Oh, I just got another email for a contest entry. We have so much to take care of. I like of to wait till the last minute. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> Jesus. People, friggin' people. We have so much that we have to take care of. We don't really have time to bullshit this week. Should we just no. dive into the news? Let's, let's go. The big news of the week was Google announced Stadia, their upcoming game streaming service. Uh, to me, it was announced with the most generic hype video possible and has me just yelling meh. I I have so many mixed feelings on Stadia that I, I don't know where to start. There's there's some interesting announcements as far as Stadia goes, but I still feel on a whole like, okay, but who asked for this? <laughs> and that feels terrible because... Realistically, a lot of people keep saying they want like a Netflix for games kind of service. Mm -hmm. I just don't know that this is what they had in mind. (laughs) Um, I think Game Pass probably does a better job on that note than than Stadia does. Although people are all like, oh, it's going to be like Netflix. And I'm like... (sighs) Game Pass already is. You know, is it really the better option? I mean, here's my biggest point. Uh, a lot of people were talking about um, the whole the whole aspect of having to download a game. And okay, yeah, games these days are fucking huge. Mm-hmm. And to download it takes a lot. Mm-hmm. But you can't tell me that streaming it wouldn't take a lot too, especially at 4K. Well, you're apparently just streaming the video. Like you're not streaming the game data. Well, there has to be, to some extent... Like, all the processing is done on their end on somewhere, the magically, and then the wow. video is exported over to us. It's the same way that PlayStation Now works, where it's all the games are done on their end, and you're just getting the video streamed to you. The problem is you're going to have latency, no matter what. They can yeah. say that it's optimized... Uh, apparently the controller is going to connect directly to Wi-Fi and not to any kind of console. That way it's just as, as direct a connection of the controller to the game as possible, but you're still yeah. going to have a little bit of latency. It's, you're especially going to be limited to what your Wi-Fi can do. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I have a ping of like two microseconds or whatever on wired connection, but my router can't hack that. My mm-hmm. router is like, yeah, I think the other Xbox pings in at um four thousand. Yeah, <laughs> at at uh, I want to say it's like fourteen or fifteen seconds. Oh, that's awful! Seconds. That is so awful! You know, that is but, horrible. Yeah, our router is ass. <laughs> that's not ass. a bad ping at all. Fourteen. Well, I mean, but this router is ass compared to what the the wire connection does. Yeah. Um. It's definitely a noticeable difference between the two. Like if I were playing Rocket League on the wireless connection, my ping would be somewhere around 60 to 80. But if I'm playing Rocket League on the wire connection, I hold a ping at 20. Damn. So, I mean, that's that's a big deal when you're playing a game like Rocket League or, or you know, Apex or whatever. Yeah, and even, even, you know, having half a second of latency between your controller input and what happens on the screen is going to be killer in something like Rocket League. Yeah. I I can't even play Forza Horizon if it's not in game mode because that little bit of latency is just enough to fuck you up. Yeah. It makes a difference. Um, And you've got to wait. And in this instance, there are more barriers between your input and your output. Yeah. I mean, when you're playing on a console or on your PC, you push a button, the bitch jumps. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way it goes. And, you know, it's literally like a half a breath between because there's only so many things in the way between that connection. But if you're going to have to stream, okay, it's going to have to send that to the cloud. It's going to have to get that back. By that time, you've already put that shit through seven or eight other inputs. <laughs> <You're just> like, <laughs> Imagine playing something that would require some serious button smashing, like like Mortal Kombat or uh, even Rivals of Ether or something like that. You're inputting buttons so insanely quick mm-hmm. 
th- th- there's no way that cloud computing could keep up just sending it back and forth and, and trying to, to keep up with the input on your controller versus what it's outputting on the screen. You just couldn't. Yeah. I'm distracted because Awesome Prime just joined the chat and told me that I won his grand giveaway last night for his uh, oh. two, his 200 Twitch followers. Oh. So I'm going to get a Nintendo Switch Labo kit. That's awesome. That's fantastic. I can't wait for the cats to destroy that. <laughs> I, that's all I could think of is like mine would immediately be like, fuck you, cardboard. I'm going to have to keep this up on a shelf somewhere so the cats can't fuck with it. Deer cats not jump on shelves. Uh, it There's depends on the shelf. There's no surface in this house that is safe for my two. We we have a couple of places that we usually keep the cats off of, and for the most part, they'll stay off. If we're not around, you know, you might walk into the living room and see one of the cats sleeping on top of the cable box. Yeah, yeah. And then you scare them away, you fucking asshole cats. <laughs> That's why when we had we had to get a new TV stand, and we immediately went for one that had the smaller openings for your consoles <laughs> and stuff. Because the cats used to crawl into the openings when we had the bigger one and lay on top of the Xbox. And I'm like, nah, we got to cut that. (laughs) That can't keep happening. And thankfully, my two are so fat, they can't get into the new one. (laughs) (laughs) That's That's why why we feed them so much. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, boy. (laughs) Oh, man. Let's see. What other news was there? Uh, the long and sordid history of the culling is finally coming to an end. Have you heard this? How did anybody think it was going to make it beyond? <laughs> like, how did anybody think it was going to make it to this point? I don't know. But after we- fucking up the game, pushing out a sequel, fucking that up, bringing back the original, making it free to play, it is shutting down May 15th of this year. The developers have said they hope that the relaunch as a free-to-play game would work out for them financially, but, quote, even with thousands of active daily users, the revenue was only a fraction of what our team required to continue daily operations. As a result, we've been forced to reduce our team size, which renders us unable to provide ongoing support and updates that would allow the game to continue to grow and thrive. Have they updated it since they made it free-to-play in the first place? I have no clue. I haven't played it, so... I can't imagine anybody wanted to take the time to play it. Like, if you had any kind of idea whatsoever of how shitty those devs were about the the whole situation, then you'd just be like, I ain't even give a fuck if you bring it back. I don't want to touch that with a 10-foot pole in somebody else's controller. (laughs) I just can't imagine why you'd even bother. On the bright side, it appears that they've learned their lesson, and at least they gave a t- an announcement and a date rather than yeah. just shutting that shit down and being yeah. sarcastic on Twitter. <laughs> Good thing I own the game, huh? Yeah, I'm, but you're I, enjoying that purchase. I owned it from the first time around that it was there. I got it on sale, so at least I didn't pay full price for it. And I never bought the calling, too, thankfully. In all reality... That's an instance where, despite how old the game is, they should have they should have refunded that shit. They really should have. I don't know. If we'll you, see if, if they you do bought anything. it. We're sorry, you know, because that's a uh, the whole situation was shitty. Yeah. Oh well. Some other news: two new games were added to the Xbox backward compatibility lineup this week with Brothers in Arms: Hell's Highway. An Air Mech Arena, which is interesting because we already have Air Mech Arena on the Xbox One, and they're both free-to-play games. So oh. now, yeah, now there's two Air Mech Arenas on Xbox One. <laughs> wow. That's an odd one to push forward, then. Yeah. I'm guessing... I know that the whole process is just that, that like, they have a handful that they work on, and as soon as one of them is functional then they they push it but it might be one of those things where like the emulator was tuned for one game and it just so happened to work well for air mech arena and they're like fuck it push it out yeah pretty much but i know they have said that if even if they can get a base game working if the dlc doesn't work as well then they won't push it yeah so i mean there's there's some really odd requirements involved to making shit work in the emulator but I give them credit for, for pushing through, and they keep on adding shit, and they'll, they'll yeah. get through it one way or another. My fingers are still crossed that we get the Risen series eventually. They're they're not highly rated RPGs, but I enjoy them. Well, they haven't. I mean, I don't 
think that there's been a quality control <laughs> involved. Just True. can we make it work? Okay, then let's go. You know. <laughs> True. No time so, for yeah. games. Mentioning the uh, the Sea of Thieves update coming in April with fishing and solo quests, which is good. More content for Sea of Thieves. I'm looking forward to that. I need to. I need to spend some more time in Sea of Thieves. This is one of those instances, though, where just shit comes out too fast. <laughs> yeah. And I've been like, Suda, we need to play Forza Horizon 4, and we need to play Sea of Thieves, and we need to play a hey, more State of Decay, because that's got new free DLC coming out. And I'm like, I can't keep up. Yeah, because now you're balls deep in the division, and nothing else <sighs> matters. Already. Yep. I don't even have balls. I just grew a pair just so I could put them in division. <laughs> And it was so good. <laughs> How much time have you put into it so far? Uh, I wonder if I can figure that out from the Xbox app real quick. <laughs> Maybe. I don't. I think I have to like go and compare it. I have 580 gamer score in it. That's not bad. So that's that's pretty good so far. I think you have to compare with a friend in order. Oops, wrong button. In order to get it to show the statistics. Yeah. I'm guessing you're already level 30, right? I am. I hit level 30 on um, Wednesday, oddly enough. <laughs> but I took the I took the slow and steady route about it. I didn't push. I, I was kind of um, just slow sightseeing, collecting, getting the collectibles and enjoying my time rather than pushing through and trying to to rank up as fast as possible. I didn't I didn't want to be carried. I didn't want to push it. I just wanted to have fun. That's like one of my friends, Ice Prime. He's been on the show before, but uh he did a nonstop stream until he hit thirty. Yeah, see I don't I didn't want to do it like that. Yeah. And was... I had friends who were miffed about it. They were like, Oh, you're taking too long and we can't play the end game. I don't I don't want to push to the end game. I want to enjoy the game. Yeah. And then I will enjoy the end game. Because um, Lord knows there's probably not that much end game content yet the way it is. Yeah. I can't. I don't want to spoil it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, don't. Yeah. There's a lot. We'll put it that way. I don't know how to get this to show me. I did it the other day. I got it to show me how many hours I had. Now I can't get it to do it. Oh, well. I know. I know. Um, before it had even went live on Friday, I was already at at three and a half days played. Jesus Christ. So I'm I'm well I'm probably well on my way to seven or eight days in it already. Good God. In a week and a half. So, yeah. Easily. Because there's only been like two days where I didn't play the division. Good lord. Oh, uh, let's see. What other news was there? Konami has officially confirmed the rumored Konami arcade anniversary collection. Remember how that was the thing that we were yes. mentioning? It releases April 18th, so it's right around the oh. corner, on That's Xbox, great. Switch, PS4, and Steam, and it includes eight games, a bonus ebook packed with interviews, sketches, and behind-the-scenes stuff, and it only retails for 20 bucks. Wow. Yeah. That's impressive. The eight games are not the eight greatest games. They have Haunted Castle, which is the arcade version of Castlevania. They have Typhoon, Nemesis, which is also known as Gradius, Vulcan Venture, which is also known as Gradius 2, Life Force, Thundercross, Scramble, and Twin Bee. If people are familiar with those games, Castlevania is an action platformer, and the other seven are all shmups. No. Oh. Yeah. So, no beat-em-ups at all, despite the fact that Konami is well known for their beat-em-ups. <laughs> that is an odd choice, isn't it? Yeah. Huh. Ah, well... Maybe maybe they're just testing the waters. Yeah. I, maybe maybe they'll have a DLC for it. That would be awesome. That's always a possibility, especially at a $20 price point. Yeah. And the, the cool thing is that's not the only anniversary collection that's coming. There's also the rumored Castlevania anniversary collection. Oh. Which includes Castlevania for the NES, Castlevania 3 for the NES, Castlevania 2 Belmont's Revenge for the Game Boy, Super Castlevania 4 on the Super Nintendo, and four more games, which are yet to be revealed. Dropping bits! Wow. We just had no time dropping bits. <gasps> so we got the we got Norg on the case. Good stuff. Nice. 
But that's not all. There is a third anniversary collection coming from Konami. What? Yes, a third one. This this one no one knew about. Contra Anniversary Collection, which so far includes Contra Arcade, Super Contra Arcade, Super C for the NES, Contra 3, The Alien Wars for the Super Nintendo, and four more games to be revealed. Where the fuck is the NES version of Contra? I, I don't know. That's what I want to know. <laughs> I have questions. <laughs> so do I. I want to know where the NES version of, of Contra is. Yeah, Grey Quantum is asking how they skip Simon's Quest for the Castlevania collection. It, it's possible that Simon's Quest in the original Contra might be part of those four more games. But who knows? The, the anniversary arcade collection isn't the greatest lineup, so I'm kind of worried about the other two. Yeah, that's... I don't know. That's really weird. I'm sorry. Yeah, well, what are you going to do? Just say that it's really weird. <laughs> Holy shit. What? Vertically impaired just dropped. What is this? Why are you doing these things? 500 bits. Wow. You know what that means? We get the long one to play. Dropping bits! Ah! All over your fucking face! Ah! Wet pancakes! <laughs> <laughs> I love that so much. Wet pancakes. Jesus Christ, Norg. <laughs> oh my god. D Tony, thank you so much. That is insane that you dropped really so much. I, th I can't thank you enough for that. That is amazing. And again, I thank you so, so much. That should, that should move up the bar on the, the refitty, the shitty compitty. Yeah, we're up to 27% now. We are getting there. We are climbing. Nice. I'm and you excited. didn't think you'd even get 1%. I didn't. You've, you've done well. People are brainwashed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, some more news. Facebook has announced the Oculus Rift S. Have you heard this? Oh. A new model of the Oculus Rift. It retails for $399, includes a 1440p LCD screen, better lenses, and instead of having to use different cameras set up and like these tracking orbs and whatever else, they have five cameras built into the headset for inside out tracking. Wow. Yeah. The, the thing, it takes one single USB port. That's all. You just plug it in and you're good to go. Yeah, but how many dollars? <laughs> $3.99. That's it? Yep, and it comes out this spring. What? Yeah, so VR is getting easier and more affordable. Yeah, that's a little, that's... I've made the joke a million times that I didn't see VR being a, a like a thing that could be in every household. So, way to prove me wrong. <laughs> that's that's definitely well within the, the realm of people will pay it. Yeah. That's cool, though. If if I yeah. eventually refitty my shitty compitty, I am going to probably look into an Oculus S. Damn. Yeah, if I get a, a souped-up computer, you know, I have the room behind me. You know, people could see kind of my... My room on stream behind. I have plenty of space in this room to do VR. I just don't have a computer capable of it. And if, you know, if I get a new computer, Oculus looks very possible, especially Damn. if it's just one cord. You don't have to set shit up around the room. It just, it works. That's my biggest problem with the that's PlayStation VR is tracking. Yeah, that's what I find most impressive is that it's just one cord and that's it. Yeah, it sounds pretty cool. Be curious to see how it works. Same. We need a review unit. How do we get one of those? Oh, yeah. I'm sure that's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> Let me hit up Facebook and see. You're making the, you got to be friends with Mark Zuckerberg. Oh, we go way. We go back. We go back. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he can help you out. He was everybody's friend. He was. Tom was the best. <laughs> Oh, man. Xbox Game Pass getting a bunch of new games added over the coming weeks. Uh, just released this week was Deus Ex Mankind Divided and What Remains of Edith Finch. Oh! So those are brand new to Game Pass. March 28th, we're getting The Walking Dead Michonne and Vampire. 
Oh, Michonne is the only Walking Dead game from Telltale that I have not played. That in well, the last season. It's going to be on Game Pass. Yay! So there you go. March 29th is Operencia, The Stolen Sun from Zen Studios. That one is releasing direct to Game Pass, which is awesome. Yeah, that's I like to see games direct direct to Game Pass. Yeah, I love it. I love it. And it's an RPG, so it's even better. You're thrilled twice I over. Am. I am. <laughs> uh, April 1st is Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. That an April Fool's joke. No, that's legit. Wow. Yeah. And then April 4th is Minecraft. Oh, yeah. Finally, after my kids actually get a copy of it, it goes into Game Pass. <laughs> that's how that shit works out. That it was does. like, um, I waited forever for um, Ori and the Blind Forest. To go to Game Pass mm-hmm. at War B Games with Gold, and I just absolutely refused to buy it. And then Lily felt bad and bought it for me. And then it went to Game Pass. She, she was like, "You've waited long enough." <laughs> <laughs> and she bought it for me. And then, like the next month, it was in Game Pass. Sweet. <laughs> so that works. Well, <laughs> last bit of news I have is the Nintendo Nindies Showcase 2019 happened. They showed off a bunch of indie games that are coming to the Switch. Uh, the big news, we mentioned this briefly during the interview, but Cuphead is coming to the Switch April 18th. This this was pretty cool. Cuphead on the Switch just kind of seems natural. Yeah. like It, it just, feels right. Yeah. It's just the kind of game that you would expect to play on a Nintendo Switch. Yeah, and the cool thing is, during the video, the guy from Nintendo even said thanks to our friends at Microsoft for bringing Mm -hmm. Cuphead to more players. Yeah. So that's, you know, the the fruits of this partnership are starting to show. And it's going to have Xbox achievements. In a post-launch update, not at launch. Yeah, not at launch. They're going to be bringing Xbox Live support with achievements. On the Switch, which I means I'm buying maybe Cuphead Nintendo a second time. Nintendo hasn't figured out that their their online service is shit, <laughs> <laughs> and that maybe they need to hit up their new buddies for some help in that apartment. <laughs> yeah, no time saying it's a beautiful love fest between the two. It's cool to see this. I'm waiting to see what else happens. There's been talk of Ori going over, uh, the constant rumors of Game Pass showing up through X Cloud. So who knows what else we're going to see from this? You know, well, it's it's funny, though, because you kind of imagine like Microsoft and Nintendo sitting at the lunch table at school, share, trading snacks and PlayStation's just sitting across the room with their arms crossed mad about it. I, I kind of figure Sony's in the corner eating glue. <laughs> they don't have anything to trade for the <laughs> fudge brownie. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> but yeah, and after Cuphead, they just a whole bunch of videos of games coming to the Switch. Overland is hitting this fall. My friend Pedro is hitting in June from Devolver. Mm-hmm. Neo Cab this summer. The Red Lantern, which is a, an adventure game. The Red game. Lantern looks incredible. That yeah. was the one from the whole thing that I was just like, <gasps> I hope that comes to Xbox. Yeah, it's a, an because adventure it's, game it's based around the Iditarod. Yes. It's got it's got like a flame in the flood kind of vibe to it for me. Where it's it's got roguelike elements and everything, and I'm just like, I I need you in my life. <laughs> <laughs> you have to come to me. <laughs> yeah, that one looked really cool. Uh Darkwood is this May. Katana Zero, that one looked really cool. Yeah. That one's coming April 18th, along with Cuphead in the Konami collection. So April 18th is looking to be a, a busy day. Yes. Uh, they showed off oh. Rad from Double Fine Productions in Bandai Namco. That's going to be releasing in the summer. And I believe that's a multi-platform game. I I feel like we've seen it as for, for Xbox, but it looked incredibly familiar when I was watching the video. And I was like, I know I've seen this before, so I'm pretty sure... But as soon as I say that, that means we won't get it on Xbox. <laughs> True. <laughs> I tend to be wrong a lot. <laughs> uh, what else did they show off? Creature in the Well, which is a pinball action adventure game. I'm sure Grant's going to love that. Uh-huh. That's hitting in the summer. Blood Roots is hitting in the summer. Pine, an open world third person action adventure, is hitting in August. Super Crate 
box is hitting in April. Nuclear Throne is out today. Yep, there's always one. I love when they do that. Uh, <laughs> Vlambeer Arcade with Ultra Bugs is releasing later on this year, and that's going to be a kind of like an update with new games every now and then. Yeah. So Vlambeer Arcade, that sounds pretty cool. Swim Sanity is releasing in summer. Blaster Master Zero Two available today for oh. nine ninety nine. Oh wow, that's not a bad price either. Yeah, ten bucks. Uh, Stranger Things Three, the game launching July fourth, same day as the series, and then the big surprise, oh. Cadence uh-huh. of Hyrule, which is Crypt of the Necrodancer fe- ne- uh, Crypt of the Necrodancer featuring the Legend of Zelda. That looks <laughs> insane. It's so weird. <laughs> I love it. And if it means we get an entire game filled with Danny B remixes of The Legend of Zelda, I am on board. <laughs> I know I saw that trending on Twitter before I got to watch the Nindies thing. And I was just like, this this is a joke, right? They're like getting a head start on April Fool's. This isn't... And then I watched it, and I was like, son of a bitch, what is this? It looks so awesome. (laughs) Necrodancer with Link and Zelda as playable characters. It's just such a weird combination. (laughs) I can't really put my finger on it. It looks cool, but I'm just like, the hell did that come from? (laughs) Yeah, really? (laughs) It's cool, though. An indie game getting to play with the Legend of Zelda IP. That is really cool. Yeah. That's impressive. That really is. But yeah, that's the news I have. Anything I missed or anything that you wanted to talk about? You did miss a little one. Which one? The original Left 4 Dead team is working on a new game. Ooh. Uh, No Valve support on this one. So Mm. um, it is not Left 4 Dead 3, (laughs) unfortunately. They have called it Back 4 Blood. Uh, Sounds interesting. it, It is Zombies. And it is expected to be very Left 4 Dead-ish. Um, not a whole lot of information about it, but it was the entire original team responsible for Left 4 Dead. That's pretty cool. So that is, I am so looking forward to that, and I cannot wait till we hear some more information on it. Yeah, that should be really awesome. Give, please. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I guess we could go on to our overload contest. We have a bunch of copies of the game overload on Xbox one to give away. And we were on Twitter asking you send us an email, tell us why you want the game and we'll give you a copy of the game. And the best part is seven emails and we have enough codes to cover them all. So you get a code. Everybody, you get a code. Everybody gets a code. Yes. First, (laughs) First email, because we're going to go through all these. First email is from Jacob Garner, who says, please, 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 please. I love Descent. Let me play Overload, please. Well, there you go. <laughs> Guess what, Jacob? You're going to play Overload. So you are welcome. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> Next email is from Oroto Demeto, who says, first time hearing about this game. It's the case with many games you guys talk about. So thank you for bringing them to my attention. It reminds me of games from the N64 and that's a positive and I don't mean graphically, but just the feel of it. My time with the N64 was a sad one. As a matter of fact, I got a used one for Christmas as a keyed. Yes, he said keyed K E E D. (laughs) (laughs) My cousin gave me some of his games since he was moving on to the PS one at the time. And of course, as destiny is the 64 broke down after a couple of months and it was too late to fix I almost quit gaming at the time. Big sadness in me all over. Evanescence playing in the background and all that. (laughs) (laughs) But this game seems like a way to reconnect with that part of me that maybe blame the N64 itself or at least help me cure the trauma. And a happy big boy day to Joe once again. You will always be my pristine waifu number one. (laughs) (laughs) P.S. Eternal Rage, you better be getting those S ranks in DMC5, young lady. Ah. (laughs) <laughs> I still haven't even had a chance because division. Yeah, I I'm excited figured. though because my kids don't have school tomorrow, so <laughs> I can stay up late tonight and I might play some Devil May Cry late tonight. Oh come on, you're going to be playing the division. 
No, because see, everybody ditches me because they got to go to work and shit and be responsible adults on Friday. And I have a Friday <laughs> where I don't have to be a responsible adult. And I'm like, well, staying up till 4 a.m. What am I going to do? Rocket League. <laughs> no, see, I only play Rocket League with Studa around. I don't play it by myself. That's why it's taking me forever to get any better at it. No, oh, God. <laughs> we play like five games a day. Next. <laughs> <laughs> Next email is from Jack, who says, I would like to win because I played the original Descent back in the days, damn, I'm getting old, and would like to see the difference. And if I'm still able to play those types of space shooters, keep up the good work. Guess what, Jack? You're getting a copy of the game. Yay. You win. Next Everybody email. Wins. Next email from BX Latino Heat, who says, good evening to the SML podcast. Me being a huge fan of flying shooters brings me to this fascinating game called Overload. This game packs everything I like, intense action, superb graphics. And since you're flying the ship on zero gravity, making this game the ultimate ride of your life. The game packs lots of things, story campaign, multiplayer, even a survival mode. Not to mention you have to destroy robots, blow shit up, and save people in the game. I recently seen Carnage stream this game and truly love the gameplay. Honestly, this one is right up my alley. So thanks to the SML podcast for the endless opportunities you give me. And you're getting a copy of the game. You Yay! win. Hooray. We need like little party poppers. <laughs> burr, 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 burr. Edit those in and post. Just, you don't edit shit, but. No, I don't. <laughs> we can pretend like you edited some, man. I'll just do air horns. Burr, burr, yeah. burr, burr, burr. <laughs> Next, from John Prudlow, who says, Dear SML Podcast, back in middle school and high school, I was really into space simulators like X-Wing and first-person shooters like Doom and Wolfenstein, so naturally I was drawn to the original Descent game on PC. Having been a big fan of Descent back in the day, I'm really excited about the possibility of playing Overload from Revival Productions on Xbox. I would love to win a copy. More modern graphics with classic action gameplay? Count me in. Thank you for the opportunity. And you're getting a copy of the game. Yay. Hooray! <laughs> uh, next email from John Harvey, who says, All right, everyone, how's tricks? I'd like a copy of Overload because it looks fucking awesome. Woohoo! Lifts top to flash hairy man boobs. Yeehaw! Winks. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> continues on you know descent doesn't get the love it should people remember doom quake etc with a certain respect but descent was just as popular at least among my friend group it isn't remembered as fondly as the more straightforward first person shooters but we certainly played it just as much saying that though forsaken on the n64 was the six degrees of movement game that i really got into i remember four player split screen matches on a tv that was 30 inches at most oh god remember those days mm-hmm Amazingly, you could even see what was happening, never mind actually play a death match. <laughs> I remember having a 32-inch like, tube TV and thinking that, you know, that was just the most amazing thing to have a TV that big. I thought my 27-inch was massive. <laughs> Technically, it was massive and it weighed about 100 pounds, but... Yeah. My cat is eating a box. I heard, I heard something. <laughs> For I the know. record, my cats are behaving currently. <laughs> I don't think the recording's picking it up, but... Pedals! What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> yes, you! Get out of here! <laughs> oh my god. Fucking cats. <laughs> anyway, John continues on. Think that got a re-release a while ago. Forsaken, he's talking about. Now that I think about it, but it doesn't hold a candle to the videos I've seen of Overload. Seems way more up-to-date, a more modern interpretation, rather than something looking back to the past like forsaken remaster and i'd like to give it a try hopefully this gets in on time forgot all about sending it good job you sent out that reminder thanks for the chance of a code looks like a fun one i was gonna stay up for a few hours of sekiro or sekiro when it drops but it's only 10 p.m and i'm falling asleep already so good night and good luck everyone you're getting a copy of the game ba -ba -ba -ba. <laughs> <laughs> good luck indeed Final email is from Talos167. Simple and sweet. I want to win the overload code so I can overload my backlog. <laughs> Good news, Talos. You're getting a copy of the game. <laughs> so seven entries, seven winners. Everyone's getting a copy of the game. And uh, everyone should be having fun. Yep. That was a good contest. Yes, it was. And I love contests where everybody wins. Same. Because then I don't have to make notes and try to like slice y'all down. Yeah. It's much better to not have to make notes. <laughs> yeah, it's always good when everybody could get a copy of the game. That too. 
but also being lazy and not making notes. <laughs> yes. Yes, very much so. Well, you ready for reviews? Yes, but before we start, I actually wanted to say I was doing some searching since I didn't have to take notes that part. <laughs> and I discovered that um, there's a reason the voice in the Red Lantern trailer sounded a little familiar. And that's because it's Ashley Birch oh, from really? Life is Strange. Yeah. That's so cool. That was, that's exciting. She does the, the main character in it. That's cool. She's yeah. getting around. She's in a lot of games lately. I was trying to, I was specifically trying to find out so I could be like, it's coming to Xbox. And I've seen it mentioned on a few Xbox websites, but they haven't outright said, oh yeah, we're going to be on Xbox. <laughs> I'm sure also, a bunch of those ninja their, games are going to show up on other platforms. Their Twitter account is literally one day old. So give them time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tell yourself that. Give them time. Be patient. <laughs> I followed them though. So <laughs> I will know <laughs> as soon as it's going to be on Xbox. I'm excited oh, about that game. I'll have to follow them as well. Yep. <laughs> anyway, you ready for reviews now? Yes. Now we can carry on. Sorry about that. <laughs> There's only a handful of them. We got three to oh. take care of, and then we're going to close the show with Tim doing two more. It's fun when Tim gets to close the show. He's fun to have on. Yes. yes. But uh, first game to talk about tonight is called Sephirothic Stories, developed by Xcreate, published by Chemco, released March 15th on Xbox One and Windows 10 as a Play Anywhere title for $14.99. Shendo, a world protected by Sephiroth, not that one, a different one. However, with the power of the world tree having begun to wane, countless people have been overcome by an encroaching murk that has transformed them into monsters. Now, with the world on the verge of destruction, an unlikely band sets out on an adventure. Cole, what is the adventure? So the adventure is to get the fairies to clean the tree so that the merc goes fuck away and stops turning people into monsters. <laughs> it's I feel mean when I say it like this. It's kind of a generic story. <laughs> it's not something that's going to like grip you and have you emotionally wounded after you play in any kind of way. You're just going to be like, yeah, it was an RPG and I played that story. <laughs> um, I don't think you're supposed to focus on the story, though. I think it's definitely more a game where the focus is on the gameplay. And for that, you have kind of a classically inspired RPG that's pretty standard fare for what you'd see from a Kimco title. Um, if you've played any of their other games whatsoever, and you pick this one up, you're already going to know what to do. Uh, the only change though, and it's a big one, is that it's not 2D like all the other Kimco titles. This one is actually 3D. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> despite being 3D, it's not, it's not earth-shattering graphics in any kind of way. And it's still very noticeable that this game started its life on mobile. Yeah, um, visually, it looks like a really cleaned up PS1 era RPG. Right. It's, it's a little rough, even though it looks better than it could have. Yeah, it looks um, better than the Final Fantasy IX remake that came out because at least the backgrounds in this game are all in HD and not super yeah. low res <laughs> pre-rendered backgrounds. Yeah, it's just that it's it's a little rough around the edges. But if it's their first 3D, then you're gonna have that. Um, they may have done other 3D games. I can't remember. Okay. I don't know. I just kind of all the other ones I have played have been 2D. Yeah. Literally every other one. So I was like, oh, look, this is new. <laughs> <laughs> uh, which is impressive. It's good to see them shake it up and try different things. Even if it's not going to be like, wow, this is mind-blowingly beautiful. It's like, eh, it looks a little rough, but it's okay. It does what it needs to do. I liked um, your squeak there. Eh, yeah. <laughs> 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 but it's really just the most fitting way to say it. You're like, <laughs> <laughs> and it's not. It's not meant in any kind of bad way whatsoever. I hope that that's coming through. Like, it's not going to shake your world, but it's it suffices for what you need. Yeah, it looks good. It um, looks, you know, like it's supposed to look. It works. Yeah. And uh, it, it's, it's plenty suitable. If you're looking to wander around in a 3D-ish environment and have turn-based combat, you're probably going to be pretty happy. <laughs> I mean, it does the combat part well because this Kimco does this well. I mean, realistically, they 
they've done it so much that they're they're like the artifacts Monday of these RPGs. Yeah. You know what you're gonna get and you know it's gonna work and you're okay with that. Um they're like with the other ones though, there there's the noticeable aspect that it was a mobile port and it does kind of stand out, but it doesn't affect the game ne- negatively. You can play it just fine. You, the controls are, are mapped fine. If you're, you know, going through the menu and choosing whether you're going to attack the monsters or whether you're going to use the skill or whatever, it's all intuitive. It all feels fine. There is one neat little aspect that's different that they haven't had in other ones, and that's um, your character is given a little garden, and you can actually grow one-time use consumables for in your garden as you as you're playing the game. So if you have like a plant sprig that'll, you know, give you a, a little bit of boost in health, you can plant that sprig rather than using it and get more health out of it after it's grown. Get a couple of berries that give you more than the sprig would have given you. Yeah. And and you're like, okay, I'm not mad about that. That's a, yeah, you have to wait for it to grow, but That's one of the be, mobile aspects. Yeah, you're gonna be walking around chopping it shit anyway. You're not gonna care. No. <laughs> you're more apt to be like, oh, shit, I forgot I had a garden. <laughs> <laughs> you're going through to go set up a fusion of characters or something, and you're like, wait a second, where'd this come from? <laughs> I forgot that was a thing. <laughs> and then you got some extra goodies to put in your bag that you forgot you had. And then you turn around, plant something else, and go forget about it again for another hour and a half. That works. I thought it was a neat little addition, though. It was something to look forward to because you would keep forgetting it. And you'd just be like, that's a pleasant surprise. I have extra healing items now. There's an exclamation point on my garden. Yeah. Something must have happened. <laughs> I like random exclamation points. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the one thing, though, that got me was I, I thought that the level scaling, you leveled up a little too easily. This... May have been my own fault <laughs> in a roundabout way. Um, I started this game three different times. I had some kind of weird glitch when I first started playing. I went through the entire first area, beat the boss, tried to leave, and no matter where I went or what I did, I couldn't get out of the area. And I spent literally three hours three in-game hours walking back and forth (laughs) in this one spot chopping down i did it so much that i had the achievement for five thousand steps and i still couldn't get out of the area oh my lord i had the achievement for killing a hundred monsters and i still couldn't get out of the first area and the funny thing is i bought the game to try and replicate the issue and you couldn't do it and i couldn't I, I restarted the game four times, what I three wondered, or four times, and nothing ever went wrong. What I wondered is, um, there was there was a free trial on the mobile version, and it was just that area. Once you hit the end of that area, you couldn't go anywhere else. And I kind of wondered if maybe there was something, some kind of mistake where maybe because I was playing it pre-release, it was stopping me right there. It's and possible. then. Like the next day, I I went through and after I'd spent, I'd went through at least two different times where I'd started new saves and tried all over again. And then I gave up and actually uninstalled the game. The next day was release day when I reinstalled it and tried again and it worked. So maybe it was some kind of just weird pre-release funkiness. with the pre-release. That shit happens so much. <laughs> but after that, the game was fine and I was able to carry on. Yeah, I had to start from scratch and I lost my stupid number of hours walking around aimlessly. <laughs> Too bad that I couldn't go into the second area level 26 already. <laughs> oh, Jesus. That's, I spent a lot of time just trying to get out of that one area. <laughs> um, I don't think it's, it's a negative impact on the game if you go and buy it today, though. So I'm not going to take that instance into account when I give my rating because it's I'm pretty sure that was just the shit that happened to me kind of thing. Yeah. Um otherwise the game worked well. I thought um there's a currency that you can get 
to get really high level gear really early if you just want to try your luck at it. And I did that a lot. <laughs> and I was actually really surprised at how easy it was to get that currency without having to actually pay for it or anything. Um, the tickets as well were another one that you could use to play the game and try to... It's like a little mini game of... Uh, not quite like roulette, but it just spins a wheel, if you will. And it's like, congrats, you got lucky, or you got a super rare, or whatever. And you get a really cool item, or you get shit that you're just going to sell <laughs> for 20 cents. Um, or forge into the other weapons, because they yeah, have that, that feature neat. back from previous X Create games. Yeah, that was that's a neat element to it. And like I said, you can you can fuse your companions. The companions, there's a wide variety of them. They have a ton of different special abilities. I love that you can switch between them dynamically. You're just cruising through the world and, and you want to swap to one of the other characters. Because they each have their own abilities that affect how they interact with the overworld too. Mm-hmm. And uh, Harold, for instance, who is your, your main protagonist, can see the monsters where others can't. And so, like, you know, if you're not really sure about going through an area, just switch over to Harold and go through it or whatever so that you know you're not going to get bum-rushed. I did have one issue with that, though. In theory, if you can see the monsters and you know you're, you're approaching them from behind, you should get the surprise attack and they not be looking at you or whatever when you go into the battle. And I found that that only happened about one out of every 12 times i would approach them from behind but i wouldn't get the surprise attack yeah i I think the surprise attacks are just random are they because i noticed that if i did it from the side it was much higher likelihood of it doing it Hmm. and i thought that was so weird like why would it be better from the side than from behind um so that was a little bit of a a pet pee for me. If I go at it from behind, I want to surprise that motherfucker. <laughs> Otherwise, I the combat was fine. But that was just a bit of an annoyance that most people probably aren't even going to care about, but I'm just one of those nerds that's like, no, I hit him from behind! <laughs> <laughs> it's an RPG. Be happy you could see the enemies at all. That's a good point. Sometimes you can't, though. <laughs> but if I can see them and I want to hit them from behind, I should get them from behind. <laughs> <laughs> Can't wait for somebody to take that quote out of context. <laughs> but, you know, beyond all that, it, it was it, it's a perfectly functional RPG. I had a good time with it. I was kind of surprised that the difficulty was as low as it was. Um, although I'm not particularly sure why I'm surprised because it feels like most I've said that about most of the Kimco games. They're not overwhelmingly difficult RPGs with ha. Um <laughs> With high um, difficulty spikes, like you, you figure them out pretty quickly. Yeah, and so that's I'm not mad about that at all. <laughs> I didn't know if you had more to say or not. Nope, I'm done. <laughs> you can well, ask I, me how I think about it. Well, <laughs> I, I do have one it. complaint I wanted to bring up myself. Okay. I think the game is a bit too heavy on story. There were a lot of times I would get into an area. And it, it would change over to a cut scene. And mm-hmm. I just, oh man, another one. Like, just let me, <laughs> let me explore. Let me do things. You know what made those, those constant long cut scenes the worst part though? The 3D characters only have like three animations. Yeah. <laughs> and you're like, okay, I'm really tired of watching these guys. <laughs> yeah. They, they just either, spin in place or jump or. Yeah. They, or lean forward. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or jump and shock. And it's like, okay, same thing over again and over again. I don't, I can't remember if you could speed up the conversations. I don't think you could skip them either, though. No, you can mash the A button and could you, just that was about skip it. But you couldn't. Like, skip the whole thing. I mean, no. Like, I just want to go mash monsters. Well, not bash monsters. I can't speak. Um, <laughs> I can never speak. I do this show every week, and I fuck up something every time. Proud of you. <laughs> I'm nothing if not consistent. True. But, well, then, yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, 15 bucks on this one. What do you think of it? I give it a try. It. It's solid for an RPG. Support RPGs on Xbox. Oh, my um, God. I didn't even have to say it this time. <laughs> I did it for you. Um but yeah, this is this is a solid one if you're if you're 
I think it's I think it's acceptable too if you're not into hardcore RPGs or you're not sure you're gonna like RPGs. Then yeah, you can t- dip your toes in the water with this one. I agree. I think it's a solid RPG. I think some of the 2D RPGs are a bit better. It's not uh-huh. the best Camco game we've seen, but it's enjoyable. It's fun, and it's another solid RPG. Next. So, <laughs> all right. Next game to talk about is called Deponia Doomsday, de- developed and published by Datalook Entertainment, released February 27th on Xbox One and PS4 for 19.99. Can you change Deponia's fate? Do you have what it takes to change Rufus's past, present, and future without accidentally destroying the whole planet? Fight time itself in this action-packed, platypus-tastic, and insanely hilarious story. Dark Mika covered this one, wrote in a review, and here's what she's got to say. <clears throat> Deponia Doomsday is the fourth and final, so far anyways, of the Deponia series of games. It tells, I guess technically it would be a side story. The first three games make up a self-contained story. This game is based on the end of the third game and runs as a side story that just happens to still contain the main character that you play as, Rufus, and his main squeeze, Goal. They, they have such stupid names. (laughs) Ah, see, I said that when I... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> when I reviewed the other one that I hated, her name was Goal. <laughs> That's why I actually didn't take this review. <laughs> God, just because of the names? It's, there's, no, there was some more, but it sat hard with me, so. All right. Go ahead. Anyway, only like one character has a decent normal name in the entire series, Tori. Everyone else's names are just terrible. Who names their daughter Goal in Rufus? That's the name of a dog. Anyway, sidetrack there. Sorry, it's stupid. It's a stupidly hard point and click game. And in that, a number of the point and click solutions don't make sense. This I blame on Rufus himself, though. He's the type who would be waist deep in water after falling in it and checking to make sure the electricity still worked so he could plug wet forks into a power socket. As far as self-made morons go, I think Rufus is probably king. Nay, God. (laughs) I'm pretty sure the mold on a 20-year-old stale piece of bread is probably more intelligent than Rufus. As such, the solutions that are required to complete a task isn't always sensible. You do start to get a bit more, uh, get in a bit more of a groove as the game continues, but still some of the solutions just aren't ones you would make sense of. If you can make sense of everything he does, then you're... Actually, no, I'm not going to be that mean. I don't want to make you cry. Let's just say if you get all these solutions and they make sense to you, I'm so, so very sorry. (laughs) The game's art is amusing and the dialogue, oh, the dialogue. If you like comedy and some stupidity, this is a mother load jackpot of the century and it's fan fusting, fan fucking gasmic. I don't know what fan gasmic is. Fan fucking (laughs) gasmic. Rufus might be a point zero zero one percent wit because his because half wit is too generous. He's still a lovable shithead. Goal is just kind of a badass who really isn't exactly down to uh, no, isn't exactly really. What the hell are you trying to write here, Dark Mika? Words. Who really isn't exactly for his shit. I don't know what she means there. Like Goal doesn't put up with the shit that Rufus does. Could have worded that better. She, yeah. She's got a she's got her own attitude about yeah. it. Yeah. Anyway, their banter is fantastic. Better yet, Rufus thinks himself smart, so he constantly talks down to everyone, and both shockingly and disgustingly, sometimes he is smarter than some of them, and that hurts my soul. <laughs> <laughs> The game is based on time travel, and that's about as much as I want to tell you. However, if you've read The Time Machine, you pretty much know what's going to happen. Hell, the game and the series as a whole tell you exactly how the game is going to end, not that anyone, including myself, will likely believe it. There's 12 collectibles that show up every now and then, which are little hats you can pick up and give you some bonus artwork. As you play the game, you unlock the cinematics, which are all fairly short. That's pretty much all there is to it. I prefer the game on PC because there's things that PC does that are quality of life benefits that the Xbox One simply doesn't do. One such feature is dragging and dropping inventory items to where they belong on the screen. When you do that, Rufus just walks to where he needs to go and uses it. On the Xbox One, you have to walk to where he needs to use it, open the inventory, and use it. However, the Xbox One for me has one area, which it's a step up from the PC. There's time sections where you have to mash a button, and for me, it's easier to mash a button on a controller than clicking a mouse or mashing the space bar, but that's a personal thing. If you don't like the Pony games, like apparently Cole, and just Mm -hmm. like, what the fuck, Cole? (laughs) then you won't like this one either. And if that's the case, just like with Cole, I'll ask you too, what the fuck? (laughs) (laughs) If you like the series, well, this game isn't important to the story, but it's a fun little side adventure to end the story on. I suggest these for the PC first, since the 
since the first game of the series isn't on Xbox yet for reasons I don't fully understand. I think it's coming later this month, actually. Mm. The first game isn't on Xbox. This is a narrative sequential series. <laughs> I suggest playing them all and on the PC since you don't have to since you have to play the first one there anyways. I don't even why isn't the first one on Xbox? Just come on, damn it. <laughs> they need to port it immediately. Which again, I'm pretty sure it's coming out later this month. So Yeah. Uh that being said, for twenty bucks it's worth it. All the games seem to be twenty each on the Xbox One, and if they're even half as good as this, they're worth it. This isn't a good game to start the series with though. I know I did exactly that. Don't do that. It's sequential, i.e. you need, absolutely need to do it in order. I can't stress it enough. So wait until later this month when the of uh, the first game comes out and then go through the whole story. Yeah. Good stuff, Dark Mika. Good stuff. Yes. All right. Next game to talk about is called Stories, The Path of Destinies, developed by Spearhead Games and Nephilim Game Studios, published by Digerati, released March 22nd on Xbox One for $14.99. Stories, The Path of Destinies is an action RPG, an enchanted storybook filled with madcap fantasy tales, each told by a zippy narrator attuned to the player's choices and actions. Cole, tell us about it. Sometimes when you offer me these games, I'll, I'll go look up a YouTube video and I have a basic expectation of what I'm going into it with. And so with Stories, The Path of Destinies, I thought I was going to get this little quick-witted, bannering fox that that was going to hack and slash his way through the world. And that was it. It was going to have some kind of little generic story attached. I didn't give it a whole lot more thought than that. I was like, yeah, I'll take it and I'll review it. And somehow this game managed to prove me right and wrong. (laughs) I cannot figure out what happened here. (laughs) So you do play as the snarky ass little fox. His name is Reynardo. He has been carefully trained in the art of sword foo. Sword foo. Sword foo. And he's at a crossroads. He's been tasked with protecting this magical book. And he's in the middle of helping a resistance movement fight an awful, awful emperor who has become incredibly oppressive and is at war using his raven army. And this is not at all what I expected to have happen. (laughs) (laughs) So when you're playing as Reynardo, you control him through the world. Um, It's a fairly linear path that you'll, you'll start off with. And you're given bits and pieces of story. Reynardo has his quick wit and he'll be blabbering along with other characters. And then the narrator will pop in and say something sarcastic here or there. And that alone would be enough to carry this game through. And I'd be like, fucking buy this. This is hilarious. Yet somehow they've thrown in a twist where that magical book is basically a choose your own adventure style game. So there are five chapters when you start this game. And every chapter you have a choice to make as Reynardo. And you will need to choose, in one instance, you may have to decide if you're going to go collect an artifact or if you're going to go save an old acquaintance. Everything you decide has a consequence. And I don't mean it has a telltale consequence where somebody pops up and says something shitty later if you made them mad. I mean, this legitimately affects how your story ends. When you get to that fifth chapter, your decisions up until that point will have a final outcome that is guided by what you did in the previous four. Spoiler alert, 90% of the time you're going to (laughs) die. And that's the important part of this game. When you die, you discover truths. When you play again, you now have extra information before you make your choices. New choices will be unlocked, and you can completely change your story. Your destiny changes every time you play. Which is amazing. Absolutely incredible. And and you can still make the same choices you made in the past, and it will still 
switch up and have different effects at the end. Your truths remain the same every playthrough, but the result those truths have on your ending is is going to be different. Now, you're going to have to play this a shit ton of times. <laughs> yes. Yes, you will. And I didn't mind because I found there were enough options to keep everything switching up. And I just kept wanting to go back and try it again. I'm like, okay, I know this is going to happen this time if I choose that path. So I would choose a different path. But sometimes I couldn't help myself. And even though I choose two or three things differently, I choose something the same the fourth time. And then the narrator would berate me and be like, against all <laughs> reason, <laughs> Reynardo went this way anyhow. And I was like, well, son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> So the the fantastic thing about it is that you're never bored with it. Yeah, you have to play it over and over, but you you're never bored because even when you're doing shit you've done already, even the narrator and the just the dialogue is going to come back and be different. You're going to be like, "Well, <laughs> it was worth it." Thanks for calling me out cuz I got a good laugh out of it. Um even though you're playing these areas over two and they are fairly linear to start with, they change up as you go because they have a Metroidvania aspect to them. There are different types of swords that you can craft as Reynardo. You have to find ore and different elements and use them at a crafting table in order to, to um, create the new swords or upgrade the ones that you have. My mic picked up some dickhead on a bike zipping by the house. So yeah, if people that. heard weird noise, that's what it was. It wasn't me. I didn't fart. <laughs> Thanks, dickhead biker. <laughs> anyway, as you were. But you need the different swords in order to serve not only as a useful weapon, but as a key. You can um, access different areas of the map. Some will have like a green door and you'll need to use your hero sword to unlock those. That's the first sword you craft. And so you have a lot of options um, for the other ones that it sucks because you, you're playing through and you have these other options and they're there and you're like, oh, I know I need those other swords and I know how to craft them and I just don't have enough materials. You're forced to play it through to get the materials in other areas, then come back yeah, and do it again and try a different path. And go off a different a different shortcut with your different weapons. So it, it keeps everything from becoming too monotonous. Now, I will say that when you're in the book and you're choosing the chapters is one aspect of the game. And then the actual combat and exploring of the islands is a different aspect of the game. And that's where you've got like almost kind of an isometric view Um and it's three dimensional and you're moving Reynardo around and, and taking on combat as a hack and slash. And those areas, even with the exploring and stuff, they can become a little monotonous. You know, when the, the Ravens are going to pop up, you know how you're going to have to fight them. There's not a whole lot of changes in between them. There are some different um, enemies that will pop in here and there, but it does get to a point where you're like, okay, I've played this for a while <laughs> and it's the same guys all the time. Yeah. Um, and that is a bit of a downer, especially given how much effort was put into shaking up literally everything else. It would be nice if there were different enemy types, but again, each playthrough can be run through so quickly. It takes maybe 45 minutes to an hour. If even that to go through a whole playthrough, that's if you're like dying a few times, like I did. Yeah. <laughs> And so you you can go through them quick enough that it's not as big a deal. If you're playing, you're like, okay, I'm going to play it once now, do one playthrough, come back in a day or two, do a playthrough. And, and you're breaking it up rather than sitting and going through. Yeah, if you try to marathon complete yeah. this in like a seven-hour session, you're going to get bored easily but you could do it if you wanted to just like cut through it really fast you could do it but you it would it would definitely take some of the enjoyment out of it but but the game has some 18 endings see i don't i don't think it's the uh a big deal i've played a ton of games that have multiple endings like that near has what like 23 
I don't remember a so, lot. Yeah, so I mean, I don't, I don't think it's a negative. I think, I, if anything, I think it was really creative how many different ways they made a single story in differently. Yeah, I, I will agree with Doc Havoc, though, that after so many playthroughs, it does kind of turn into a slog. Even though they change up what's being said or they change up parts of the story, it it does get repetitive. Mm-hmm. That was It I, does. I can agree with that, yeah. I covered this one back on the PS4, God, a couple years ago, back when we first started doing reviews on the show. And I, I want to say I went through it four or five times, and it, it did start to wear out its welcome after you're that far into the game. And you kind of do just wish that it would, you know, just give me the new shit. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to go through this part again. I don't want to go through these airship battles again. Just come on. The only time I was particularly aggravated was fighting the stupid shield ravens. Those were the only thing. I didn't care to like keep checking through everything over and over. I play a lot of shooters. You spend a lot of time killing the same people the same way. Yeah, true. So, so I'm not, I'm a little more immune to that than most people. But those fucking shield ravens where you had to pick the other ones up and throw them into it, those were the ones that fucked my couch every time. <laughs> and I was just so mad about it. <laughs> and like, that's where I come up and kind of realized I was like, yeah, this is better if I stop and take a break every now and then. Because those shield ravens would have me ready to just throw the controller. Yeah. But otherwise, I had a blast and I this, I mean, it was a short week and there wasn't a lot of options, but I really enjoyed the game. This was definitely my favorite for the week. Out of both of them? Yeah, out of both of them. <laughs> this was my favorite not division game this week. <laughs> <laughs> well, then 15 bucks on it. What do you say? I give it a buy it. You guys can say it was a slog if you want, but I I had a lot of fun with it. Yeah, I enjoy. I picked it up on Xbox. I'm thrilled that it finally came to Xbox. I do want to get back into it and start playing it again. I figure it's been long enough since I played it on PS4 that I'll, I'll it will it'll kind of be like all new to me again. Plus, my yeah. memory is how bad. <laughs> <laughs> get off my lawn. <laughs> but yeah, that is it with you. Uh, yeah. That that's that's it for you. We're we're gonna switch on over to Tim. So, do you have any final thoughts? No, nothing special this week. Have fun with Tim. All right, and we are closing out the show with Tim Ekebis once again. Tim, how are you doing? Hey, I'm good. Doing well. You're here to close out the show Ooh. once again. Yeah, the closer, the main event, the overrun, <laughs> the overrun. the wrestling reference. They haven't done overruns in a while. No, they don't need to. They, I mean, the whole third hour is kind of an really overrun, running, running over in in, in our hearts. Um, <laughs> what, what are you gonna do? I thought SmackDown went on a little bit late last night. That was right up to the buzzer. Yeah, I actually that... watched it live because it was such an exciting episode. Oh, it was so good. Yeah, Kofi Mania. Yeah. Kofi Mania, man, I love it. I love it. The freaking they are really dancing around the Vince McMahon as a racist issue right now. <laughs> like, I don't know if you saw the, uh, sorry, wrestling tangent, like, like that's new for my segments. Yeah, um, really? Yeah. Uh, Woods and, and E posted like kind of inner, like just quick promos today. Uh, but like Big E's is just like, you know, just doesn't look like there's opportunities for people like us, people like us. I'm just like, damn. They are saying it without saying it because that's that's the storyline now is the new day is just thinking of quitting because they think it's bullshit. <laughs> what do you think is going to happen next Tuesday? A lot of I, people think that they're going to have like a, a company wide strike. That's what I that's kind of what I think is going to happen is just that like a ton of people are going to be like, this is bullshit. Like you consider how many people were what they had watching on the backstage monitor, which was cool. Um, that all they're all cheering gonna, when when yeah. he beat Orton. Yeah, that they're all going to come out and just be like, no, we're all walking and with with the New Day. This is ridiculous. Uh, yeah. And then it'll be something where like, if Kofi loses at WrestleMania, you're all fired. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, yeah. Also weird is that it's two weeks out from WrestleMania and apparently Vince McMahon doesn't have an alternative to Kofi. He just doesn't want Kofi. He doesn't know who he wants to wrestle Daniel Bryan. It's just not There's no other match storyline. Yeah, it's just <laughs> fucking don't think about it. Your ears will burn. But in two weeks, we're going to be talking about a lot of wrestling. So oh, we are race for that, folks. Pencil that in for that's going to be a long one. 
it it sounds like WrestleMania is going to be preposterously long, and therefore our preview will be the same. Yeah, the NXT, the NXT portion will be the same size. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> Anyways, you got two games to talk about. Should we get to those? Let's get to those games. Let's talk about some games. All right. First up is called Claybook, developed and published by Second Order, released March 12th on the Switch for $14.99. Claybook is a unique world made entirely of clay. Shape your character and the world around you to overcome challenging obstacles. Tim, tell us about it. All right. Claybook. So I thought this game looked like uh, something neat to play alongside my kid Uh, because it's got, you know, it has this fun clay aesthetic like the whole world is made out of clay i say the whole world but it's kind of a diorama like in a kid's bedroom like you literally see the child with a joystick controlling the ball that you're controlling off to the side (laughs) um which he has you know he's a kid but he appears much larger than your blob and has kind of this ominous dead stare uh so that's great and not not terrifying at all um (laughs) So yeah, the game is kind of, I want to say, like Little Big Planet esque in what it's going for. Uh, the single player content is relatively limited. I mean, I guess it's not that limited for a fifteen dollar game. Um, and that you just have like five, what they're called, referred to as books, with a few levels a piece, four levels a piece. Um, but then there is a lot of like creation, you know, play, share, create. Remember that. Mm -hmm. play share create yeah as that stuff it's like okay you can download user made levels um you can make your own levels um there's cool you know neat ideas where like if you're just if you're playing a level you can in the middle of the level just break out into kind of like a freestyle mode and just change your your blob into any one of like two dozen different shapes and just start kind of screwing around with a level um so that's cool, and, and I and I like that all that is there. Um, in the like community constructed levels, you can organize things by like their rating, by their objective, by creators, and and stuff like that. Um, they have the tools for you know making your own levels. There's only about um, when you're building a level, you kind of decide what kind of level you're making in terms of like its objective. And then you can start like placing parts and bits and pieces and manipulating and, and creating things your you know, however you want to do it. And, and that's pretty cool stuff. Um, the so basically what ends up happening is that your your single player mode, like it was a little big planet, ends up being like a kind of a demonstration of like what you can do with this game. Right. Yeah. Um, and <laughs> the problem is the game doesn't play that well. Uh, in in my humble opinion, uh, if it's something because I, I was kind of hoping for some you know kind of like a, like an ease to play like you're rolling this ball around you know tackling some kind of like you know uh, tackling your objectives uh, and, and it would just kind of have this kind of simplistic like charming almost katamari esque feel to it is kind of what I was hoping for but like it really you're uh, controlling your shape whatever it is and there there's different shapes um like it it, by default it's it's a ball but it can switch into like a a cube a uh cylinder and a rectangle is the other one i don't know why i'm blanking on that i didn't use it quite as much um because like the square is good for climbing slopes but the cylinder is like the best thing for climbing and just kind of the way like the physics feel of you moving like, and it feels very muddy. And I mean, you're literally playing with mud in in, in a certain sense, right? But, mm-hmm. like, I feel like you, it, it, sometimes it's difficult to get your ball moving. I keep wanting to say character, which is why I keep, like, umming there. Um, <laughs> you do not appear to have a consciousness. Um, like, to get your, like, ball moving, especially trying to get your ball moving up a slope, that's, like, its own whole thing but yeah like sometimes it feels like like it's a little bit of a struggle like you like almost like you're spinning your tires and like mud would be flying out the back of it kind of imagine that in your head that's not what it looks like in the game um and then you start moving and then you have all this momentum and it's kind of tough to like slow your momentum down and there's some objectives in in levels that you know require you to kind of like precisely move your object along a path 
um, you know, like up a ramp over like some narrow paths to, to reach an objective or you're trying to, to pick up specific things around the environment or whatever. Like, like there's some things that call for precision, but it doesn't really feel like the precision is there in the controls. And, and there's, uh, there's issues, man. So like some of the objectives there is like one where there's like a race, there's a rocket race where you're, you turn to a rocket ship. There is one where you have to pick up chocolate, absorb chocolate, like bits of chocolate around the level. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, there's one where you have to like manipulate liquids in order to like fill bowls or like move the liquid from one place to another. So in like, in, in those specifically, you are generally trying to, uh, shape the landscape. Like if you hold, uh, one of the triggers, it absorbs clay from the landscape into your body. Uh, and so you have to kind of like, you know, you, you open the side of this bucket and then you have to make a channel down into the bowl. But I ran into problems where like, like on one of them, I, uh, I dug the bowl. I ended up digging the bowl too deep. Um, and so like the liquid was going down, but it was going below like the, uh, the box, like where it was sensitive. It was looking for liquid. So I was filling the bowl, but the liquid was going too low. So it wasn't actually filling and registering for completion. Oh boy. Um, which was a, a little janky. Uh, there was times when like I would fall into a bowl and not be able to climb my way back out. Um, and, and, and it's tough sometimes because it's like, I'm trying to build, you know, make, make a channel or manipulate the environment in some way. And I'm like, uh, like, okay, I want to push like up this hill and kind of build the, the trench uphill. But what ends up happening is I end up kind of just munching or eating. They literally call it eating like down into the hill rather than like moving uphill. So I'm just making more of a hole instead of like a channel. And they do have a mechanic that kind of adds to the game, but also kind of feels like a cop out where you can reverse time. And the way that it works as a mechanic is that when you reverse time, you'll leave like uh, basically a shadow of yourself where you just were. So sometimes they actually use that for you to build bridges. Like you'll go off a platform, you'll kind of start to fall, then you'll rewind time and it'll leave like a copy of yourself there for you to roll over. But it, most of the time, it feels like the reason the reverse time mechanic is in there is because the controls aren't great and you can get yourself suck, <laughs> stuck in situations where if you couldn't, like, reverse your way out of them, you'd otherwise have to completely restart a level. No. Um, and it doesn't end up feeling like fun. So it's just like kind of the and man, like <laughs> eating chocolate and no one's ever said this. Eating chocolate sucks. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Like these levels where it's like, okay, you got to go around and eat the chocolate. It's like, cool. But it's like, it's so finicky sometimes about picking up the chocolate or it's just like, I'm, I'm going up on top of this pile of chocolate and then I'm just like spinning and holding the eat button. And it's kind of like getting some of it, but not all. And it ends up being tough to kind of actually get the whole piece of chocolate. Like it would be more sensible. It's like, okay, like if they gave you a bit of a gimme on it, you know, like yeah. if you picked it up in like 10% chunks or 5% chunks instead of 1% chunks, there's chunks. There's one level where the chocolate is literally like it is a bridge that goes over the center and you can get into a situation where it's like you eat enough of the bridge such that you can't get to parts in the middle or you can't get over it. Like it, it's, it's weird because you're, you're eating the bridge. You're eating the thing that holds you up, but then you fall through the bridge by eating it. And I guess on some level, it's like, oh, I got to be careful how I eat this thing. But there's like the way the controls, and the physics are kind of wonky, like it doesn't really work well. And and more importantly, it's not like a ton of fun. Um, and it and it's something that I was looking to like, hopefully, like, you know, play around with with my kid or, you know, recommend to people with kids. But I just think like the controls and kind of the physics are, are so borderline frustrating that it's just like they wouldn't like it doesn't have an ease of play to it. I guess I should say like there doesn't feel like a good ease of movement when you're when you're moving your object around and trying to collect things and, and move around levels like it just feels like too muddy and you're not like getting I wasn't getting what I wanted to out of the controls, um, which is unfortunate because it has like this cool suite of like making levels and like getting more levels. And and it seems like it would be a fun thing to play around with if it were actually fun to play around with <laughs> um, <laughs> is, is kind of the bummer. Uh, drink water, but that's it, really. <laughs> that's the game. That's Claybook. Well, then 15 bucks on it. What do you think of it? No, I would I would have to, to deny it. Just like the way 
it, it's it's got a lot of cool stuff going on um but even at kind of the the low price it's just like when it's not a lot of fun to play i just don't think it's it's worth it in the end even for kids man i think i'd be frustrated as a kid trying to play this game what would you do to improve the experience i mean it's it's for me it's just that like kind of like the physics and like the just the feel of the controls and the movement of the object don't feel good um it's kind of the core of the game in a way well it's a core of the game play um so i don't know maybe having different options for that like a classic and maybe like a a easier style might help things along um just to just to make it more enjoyable you know yeah yeah Oh, well, final game to talk about tonight is called Block a Pix Deluxe, developed and published by Lightwood Games, released March 21st on the Switch for $7.99. The block-filling logic puzzle where every grid has a picture hidden inside. Reveal the picture by dividing the grid into smaller rectangular blocks to create a colorful mosaic. Each block must contain one clue number indicating the size and color of the block to be painted. Tim, tell us about the game, uh, at least what I didn't already say. <laughs> well it's like uh yeah there, there's kind of not a, a ton to to extrapolate on on, the, on this game because it's pretty simple and straightforward it's it's a so if, if have you ever played picross um or maybe a sudoku type game it, it falls into that vein and i think of it more aligning with picross because you are making a picture um, if you don't know what the cross is, you should find out because they're some of the greatest freaking puzzle games that Nintendo has put out. Like the 3DS and 2DS ones are incredible. Um, I gotta say, I've never heard anyone call it Picross. Oh, Picross. Yeah. I've, I put the, the emphasis on Picross. Oh, oh, I thought, oh, okay. Oh, yeah. like that. I gotcha. All right. Yeah. See, no one really knows new things every day. <laughs> no one really knows. Um, block of picks is very easy to pronounce. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, but it's similar to, to something like that. And that you, you have a, a flat grid, you have, uh, numbers laid out across the grid, the, the grid that give you clues. And it's a situation where you are kind of using, uh, logic and numbers to puzzle out how to, uh, form shapes, solve the puzzle to create the picture in the end. So unlike, uh, Picross, 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 uh, <laughs> um, where, you know, they, they put the, the numbers along the side and columns and rows, and you got to kind of figure out how many are in a row and what the spaces are with this. This works more with like um, squares and rectangles and such and stuff like that. So so on a grid, you will have uh, these numbers and the numbers will be colored because they, they will fill in a, a different color uh, for the final picture, which is important when it comes to like trying to kind of cheat your way through a little bit at the end when you're looking at the picture you start thinking like oh okay i think this color needs to go this way to be symmetrical with this part over here you know da 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 um because to be clear you're filling in every square on here no square will be left untouched um so for example oh man this is tough to might be tough to explain um you have like a four there's a floor a a four a blue four and that four could take the shape of either you could stretch it out to be a cube, not a cube, a square. That's what it is when it's two dimensions, a square. <laughs> or it could be like a line of uh, of four squares in a row. Um, and you kind of start figuring this out by looking at context clues. Usually, and like I would with, uh, usually in this case, I'm, I'm looking around like the edges of the puzzle to be like, okay. Or, or I'm looking in spots where there's a bunch of numbers like bunched together near a wall. So I can start figuring out like kind of like, okay, here in the corner. No other number that I'm seeing could could fill in this block at the corner. So it has to be this four or this six down here, which I have to stretch out into a two by three block to fill in the corner and just fill in this space with this yellow color. Um, and then it becomes, well, OK, if this stretches up like that, then this two that's right next to it has to stretch this way because it can't go into where the six just was. You, you follow me here. It's kind of like if this, then this. My wife yeah. can't follow it all. She's not good at logic number puzzles. I'm trying to explain it to her, and her brain was just oozing out onto the floor, and we had to clean it up, spray down <laughs> the rug. <laughs> not good. <coughs> you okay over there? I'm dying. <laughs> this is last review. Uh, Rip. Uh, so, yeah. F. Uh, the game, so you go through and you figure things out, um, and you just go keep going like, if this, then this, if this, then this. <coughs> And at the end of the day, you've painted yourself 
kind of a simple picture of something. A girl, a, you know, a, a, who knows what. Lots of stuff. Lots um, of possibilities. Lots of possibilities. But, you know, it, it's simple, basic stuff like that. Like, you're not painting these soup well. <laughs> In the beginning, you're not painting these super detailed, elaborate dioramas. Um, but, uh, yeah, the game has uh, both standard button controls, and it also has touch control integration, um, which is nice. Not not a lot of games use the Switch touchscreen, I don't think. Uh, you kind of forget that it's there sometimes. Um and you can switch between them just because if like you're using the buttons, then if you just touch the screen, it'll switch to touch controls. Um, I kind of found it a little bit easier to use the buttons just to grab objects and, and stretch them out and and and, and do that. Um, but they're there, uh, dep- depending on how you feel. This game was also on on like iPad and other stuff. Uh, if you need a well, when you put when you pause the game, there is an option called fix. And one of the things I like is if you say fix, it tells you how many errors there are, but it doesn't tell you where they are. It just tells you that they exist. Um, (laughs) Now, for some people, they might want to know where they exist. But I like just knowing that, like, because sometimes I get into situations where I'm just like, things don't seem to be working. And I'm like, okay, did I screw something up? I don't want to know where I screwed up, but I just want to know if I did or not. So you can go in there, click fix, and it'll say you have this many problems. And it also does give you the option to fix the problems for you if you want, if you just can't figure out what you did wrong. Yeah. Uh, uh, but, yeah. Um, but, yeah, a- as you go along, the puzzles start out, they're kind of small-ish, I want to say, like 15 by 15 uh, s- square grids and, like, 25 by 15. And they get up to being, like, 100 by, like, 75, 85. They get quite large and you can end up Good spending Lord. quite a lot of time on some of the big ones and there's probably about 200 puzzles in this game at least 100 150 i have to i have to think i didn't i didn't math out um the actual number yeah, um, lightwood doesn't mess around they include a lot of puzzles in their games yeah um the only kind of n- and it does have save states like you can well not even save states you can save a puzzle part way through like if you just get stuck you can save your progress just go on to something else and jump back into that puzzle puzzle where you saved it at any time uh which is nice my one knock against it is that there that i could see there was no colorblind options um i am not colorblind myself but i have to imagine that when you like once you get involved with like reds and greens um I don't think it would stop somebody from being able to enjoy and play the game, but I think having some kind of an option there might be good, especially because color can be important for trying to, well, one, getting the satisfaction of finishing the puzzle, the full satisfaction of it. And uh, sometimes when you just need like a little bit of a hint, you know? Yeah. Um, but other than that, I mean, like it, it is a, a great twist kind of on that uh, 2D logic number puzzle format. Um, for eight bucks, there's tons of puzzles in it. Like it's really pretty straightforward in what it does, but what it does is great. Um, so if you're looking for a game like this, this is kind of a no brainer. <laughs> really? <laughs> well, you asked, you answered the question before I even got I to did. ask it. Yeah. Yeah. No, it, it, it like, it, it, it's great. It, it, buy it for sure. Eight bucks. That's, that's cheap for, for the amount of value you're going to get out of it. And, it. and it's a lot of fun. <laughs> Awesome. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Normally, Chris Taylor covers uh, the Lightwood stuff, but he was kind of busy, so yeah, screw gave you stuff. a shot at it. Woo! Yeah, victory. <laughs> it's fun. I'm glad to hear that you enjoyed it. Yeah. <laughs> I enjoy games. <laughs> it's plenty of the, that I, you know, most, mo- technically most of the games I review, I end up liking. I have the statistics to back it up. Do you? I do on my on my spreadsheet. Let me tell you. Let's 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 throw out some numbers here real quick, because I know you don't keep track of this stuff. No, uh, not at all. No, it's about so thus far I have, and this is going back to 2016. I have 43 buyets, 12 triets, and 24 deniets, and two efforts in that two. time. <laughs> so so things even if you com- combine the triets and the deniets, still the buyets are are in the lead, man. <laughs> you I will say you are the lead deny it reviewer. I'm I bet I am. 
Because man, when a game starts like when I don't feel like it's it's worth my time, I start getting pissed. Is what it is. <laughs> it's just like you know, I got a kid. I only got so many hours to put into games. So then it's like when I'm putting time into a game and I'm not having fun, like ooh, ooh. <laughs> oh man. Well, that is it for this episode, Tim. Thanks for coming on and uh, yeah, thanks for having closing me. out the show with me. Woo! Burning Do the ha- place down. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, my, so like my sprayer on my faucet is broken right now. This will be my final thought. The sprayer on my faucet, so like it has a little bit of a leak. And so when you, uh, this is just the sprayer, not the faucet. So when you turn on the sprayer, like sometimes the water will come pumping out like the, the fa- like this little crack in the sprayer. And it'll be like, boom, 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 boom. and like all I can think of is that fucking Seth Rollins is about to come into my kitchen because it sounds like <laughs> the beginning hits of his his freaking entrance theme like and then it's like you know i finished filling my water class or whatever you just expect someone to yell burn it down! <laughs> and, burn, blah, blah, blah. yeah that it's it's ridiculous maybe he'll be burning it down in two weeks at wrestlemania <laughs> we'll see we'll have to see what our picks are on that episode coming up yeah i'm excited for that one yeah Whew. all right well, that's it for this episode. <laughs> Good night, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>